<laughs> Throw me a freaking bonus here. This is the main event. Mark's bonus podcast brought to you by Belly Up Unhinged Radio Network Sports. I'm your first host, lifelong wrestling fan, former radio guy, cat dad, and the man who wasn't adequately prepared to split this podcast into two parts. I am Troy. And with me, as always, is the main event collector and figure hunting warrior. He's the ECW encyclopedia of classic wrestling. He is the Johnny Grunge to my Rocco Rock. He is Greg. What's up, Greg? He likes to party. I would say, which one is the worst one? But, you know, eh, can you really say? Uh, <laughs> Actually, um, I, I will say, I sorry, think Rocco I, uh, Rock was a better wrestler. Yeah, well, yeah. And he measure that. Yeah, he was uh, he was slightly above suck. That piss I took earlier was way better than what I took this morning when I woke up. You know, there you go. Good lord. Well, hey, a, a piss can give you relief. Uh, Public Enemy will not. Well, on There's the contrary, that. ending this podcast today is going to give me relief. Oh, come on, you don't you don't love ECW in 1995? I don't love How ECW dare- ever. How dare you? Anyway, uh, but yeah, we weren't expecting this to go as long as it did. But hey, you know what? Hashtag plans changed. So there's that. So we're going to split this into two parts for you. I hope you all enjoy it. Uh, Before we get into the actual show, though, time out here real quick to let you know that the main event marks is sponsored by Swift Lifestyles. They are clean energy drinks and focus enhancers, great tasting vitamins and big brain nootropics that are made and shipped from the USA. Go to swiftlifestyles.com and use our special promo code main event marks all one word to get 15% off your order. It's main event marks all one word to get 15% off your order at checkout. And now that we're done with that, before we get into the actual show at hand, we're going to take our first break here and sell you some of our stuff. It's a little late to uh, order any gifts or anything like that, unless, you know, you're, you're wanting to treat yourself after a holiday done well. So get yourself a new That Is Correct shirt on our bonfire store. Uh, I, I'm thinking that'll be a hit with, uh, with a lot of people. So check that out and all of our other great designs. And we'll tell you all about that in this upcoming break. And on the other end, we're going to cover more ECW 95 after this. <laughs> Follow the main event marks at facebook.com forward slash main event marks pod on Twitter at main event underscore marks and on Instagram, both at main event underscore marks and at main event collector. It's that time of year where the Christmas holiday is upon us. And when Santa squeezes his fat white ass down that chimney night, he's going to find the jolliest bunch of assholes this side of the nut house. And that means you should check out our merchandise store over at bonfire.com forward slash store forward slash main event marks. There's variations on the main event marks podcast official logo, quotes and sayings from the show, and more. We've even got a Christmas theme design. But we didn't forget about our Jewish listeners celebrating Hanukkah. I'm Jewish. You can get you or your loved ones some great designs on t-shirts, tank tops, hoodies, and more. They make great gifts to yourself or for Christmas and Hanukkah. Jewish! Go to bonfire.com forward slash store forward slash main event marks and get yourself the official merchandise of the main event marks podcast. We do take requests, so hit us up on social media for more merch. And have yourself a happy holiday, Merry Christmas, or a happy Hanukkah. And a happy new year. By God, somebody's interrupting the main event marks. Sit down, JR. It's just me, Kyle Sullivan, a.k.a. Shaggy Von Doom, your host of Here in Puckburg on the Hockey Podcast Network. I know, a hockey show on the main event marks. Who would have thought? This is an invasion angle. Somewhere between the Nexus and when WCW tried to invade WWE, you know, somewhere in there. But I'm over here just telling you that one half of your tag team champions over here, Greg... He told his story of his love for the game of hockey over on my show. And if you'd like to hear that story, all you have to do is search here in Puckburg, wherever you get your podcast, or on YouTube. In the meantime, Shagamania's got to go run wild on some other hockey show. So, just remember, quote the Raven, nevermore. Take your vitamins, say your prayers, and oh yeah! (laughs) 
the Main Event Marks are available wherever you get podcasts and on YouTube. Find all of our links on our link tree at linktr.ee forward slash main event marks. And we're back. We're back. Real quick, we want to let you know that the Main Event Marks is sponsored by Shocked Energy. Shocked Energy is a healthier alternative to traditional energy drinks that gives the energy that gamers need while in a long session without skimping on their health. Their products come in a powder form and you mix them into water. You can either choose from green apple or watermelon. You can also try both if you get their sample kit. Use our special link that is down in the podcast description, or you can simply go to shockedenergy.com at checkout. Use the promo code main event, all one word, to save 10% on your order. That's promo code main event, and you're going to save 10% at checkout. Do you like your coffee like you like your podcasts? Gimmick and politics free. Well, so do we here at the Main Event Marks, and so do the guys and gals at Coffee Brand Coffee, where they ditch the gimmicks. You see, when you buy your coffee from other roasters, chances are that they've been sitting on the shelf for heaven knows how long. Don't rob yourself of freshness. At Coffee Brand Coffee, they roast to order, ensuring that you get the freshest coffee possible. And as Greg will tell you, that's what counts. Coffee Brand Coffee offers bagged coffee, as well as K-cups, and for the non-coffee people, They offer a variety of teas and cocos. Just click on the link down in the podcast description or go to coffeebrandcoffee.com and use our promo code main event, all one word, at checkout to get 5% off your order. That's coffeebrandcoffee.com and use the promo code main event to save 5% at checkout. Diving into July here. Apparently, there was no protection. Boom. Ah, You can say that again. Because apparently there was a lot of heat on the gangsters for leaving Smoky Mountain before they were planned to because they were scheduled to stick around through July, but left in June. The team had been complaining. I can't believe they didn't honor their, their word. I seem like such stand-up dudes. So, it, it seems so out of character. I just, I don't know if I believe it. <laughs> Lying son of Right? Uh, when, when you're putting Jim Cornette as the moral superior here, something's <laughs> wrong. Wow. Good but Lord. The team had been planning or excuse me, complaining to others in the company about their pay lately. Oh, so you jumped to ECW. That makes a lot of sense. It's a bold move, Cotton. <laughs> Let's see if it pays off for them. <laughs> now, see, I'm wondering if new if New Jack always got his check from Heyman on time because he'd always help, hold him up at knife point. Oh, just a knife, huh? Well, I I th- I think he's more into uh, you know the handhelds there, so I I don't know maybe he's maybe also not. sad on occasion that he would always carry a screwdriver on him. So why is that the weapon of choice? Oh, yeah, I got a screwdriver. I mean, I guess the <laughs> pro- plausible deniability could be like, oh, I'm just you know if somebody catches you with a screwdriver, you're like, oh, I'm just gonna you know do some drywall later or something. Yeah, I I don't know. I'm not gonna. Who the I'm hell gonna... uses a screwdriver for drywall? <laughs> What the uh, hell are you doing? I mean, if you're hanging <laughs> something, I guess. You don't hang on drywall. You learn us to dry first. My head hurts. Well, when, uh, I, when you when you hang pictures uh, in the yes, drywall. Yes, you're not doing that until after you've painted the damn drywall, though. Yeah, I guess I should have been more specific. And why but... are you using a screwdriver to hang pictures? Why not a hammer? Depends on how heavy the picture is, Greg. God. For all those of you interested, you can listen to my home improvement podcast on the side, so... Exactly. He does it with a guy named Al. <laughs> we, we all love Al. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, anyway. We're having way too much damn fun with this podcast. <laughs> Somebody's got to be having fun here. I Because I would look if I had to actually watch this stuff this week, I wouldn't have been having fun. So I'm, I'm just putting that out there. Good point. <laughs> <sighs> but anyway, uh, so. Almost everyone in ECW is convinced that Shane Douglas is headed to the WWF, and it's just a matter of when, not if. Well, okay, we are on what opponent. quarter, quarter two now, nineteen ninety-five? Are we? Uh, quarter we're, three? Yeah, we're about to wrap up. We're about to wrap up the second third of the year, so we're okay, we're two so, thirds of the way through the year now. So, like, this is like the third time now, and this seems to be a running thing that you said, "Oh, they're sure he's leaving," or blah blah blah. Why are we like so sure every month? At some point. He's not leaving. I mean, we know he does. You see what I'm saying, though? Like, yeah, right. It's like, well, you're going to get the hell out or what? Well, kind of like is... earlier you said like four times, it was considered one of the best matches in ECW. 
Okay. Yeah. You can't set it every damn time. Well, this uh, is going to be frustrating. It always one-ups itself, Greg. God, keep up. I'm trying. Trust me, I am. Well, this, honestly, <laughs> I should have said this from Go, but this is honestly the podcast of, well, this might happen. It didn't happen. Well, it's, it might happen again. It's not going to happen. <laughs> like, Just call seriously, it the podcast. We got it. it, it Plan like, change. Seriously, yeah. That's, <laughs> like, that's a lot of stuff here. But ECW held two shows for an internet fan convention. Good Lord. That's just called a convention nowadays. Uh, this wasn't John Arezzi's, was it? No. No, that was... Uh, I think I, I think he wrapped his up by this point. Oh. I could be wrong, but... Uh, no, this was something... Else. This this ended up being Cyber Slam, I believe. Like, That's right. Nope. You already said that earlier. You did. Okay. Unless this is a different one. I mean, how many damn internet conventions can you have in 95? Well, actually... Okay, yeah. 95. Okay, okay, 95. You got me with that one. Yeah. Nowadays, every damn day, or every weekend at least. This is the Man Boob Sweat Convention. <laughs> I, I always like the, the Joe Rogan stand-up thing where he's talking about internet trolls. I can't remember what specifically he was talking about, but he's talking about they you know they sit in the their dark mom's basement in their room with Cheeto dust on their fingers. What? Off into their own shirt and sniffing their own farts, Good like board. that. Like that pretty much sums up <laughs> a lot of internet uh, internet trolls nowadays. Those are the same people. Hey. Who call, those are the same people who who uh, instigate the swatting of people. By the way, because I didn't like what you said on YouTube, so I'm going to call the authorities and say you have a bang bang. <laughs> uh, dude, a uh, a mutual friend of ours sent me a meme yesterday. Yeah. And it was the most truthful. I didn't even laugh because it's like, this is not funny. It's absolutely true. It was a picture of an AW fan. And it could be any wrestling man to be fair. Oh, God, I know what one you're referring to. He was holding a title <laughs> belt and said, cost $400. Yeah. <laughs> said, Do you know it cost four bucks? You can't buy this. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I okay, you know, hindsight, I'm dude. laughing at it. But at the time, I read, I'm like, this, this is true. I mean, I can't laugh at this because it's 100% true. I went to WrestleCon with you, dude. <laughs> I know. <laughs> that that means it's supposed to be just, funny. Don't be hitting you with truth ones. I mean, this is uh, right. uh, uh, Let's just say that convention center smelled ripe. All right. Yeah, yeah. You could tell what floor because I mean, it was like a hotel, whatever. You could tell what floor the convention was on by the smell. It's like entering into Jersey. You know, you got there when you hit that. Well, hold smell. on now. At first, it's like entering into like a, a beautiful rose garden. You know, they got a nice little. Uh, check-in area and all that and then yeah. you go up to jersey <laughs> yeah exactly so yeah. in so in that respect it's not like going from new york to jersey because you're basically just going from one crap hole to a stinky crap hole but either way i digress uh, i'm gonna piss some people off with that one whatever hey i i have really no problem with new york it's not jersey at least of course i mean yeah. you know it's 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 not great That's but it's equivalent. not jersey the equivalent of Cleveland celebrating as they say, hey, we're not Detroit. <laughs> like big wolf. You want a medal? <laughs> but anyway, uh, of note from the first show was an angle where a girl at ringside, Francine, got into a fight with Beulah. They did this. He's still times, only by alive, way. by the way. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, Shane Douglas had a debate with Cactus Jack calling ECW, quote, Extreme championship bullshit. How original. Like, that's not even clever. I'm not uh, I'm not a, a political person, you know that, but I would never get into a debate with Mick Foley. I think he's hardcore set in his ways, which which is whatever, it's you're right. But man, he he's like one of those guys that no Well, we we've established <laughs> Shane Douglas is a school teacher, so I'm assuming yeah. he's smarter than he lets on sometimes, but I don't know. And yet he stayed with these or went back to ECW when he got the hell out. Yeah. Okay. You sure? Yep. You sure? Hey, you know, hey, I don't know. I don't know, man. But anyway, he said that's why he's leaving to go wrestle for the promotion that has slash had classier stars like Bret Hart and Bruno San Martino. The crowd even. And chanted, at the time, Mantar, the goon, Bastion Booger. Yes. <laughs> Hashtag real wrestling. <laughs> okay, Bastion so, Booger may have been gone, to be fair, but yeah, no. Yeah. The other ones were still there. Somebody posted an old commercial 
for the WWF that had some skinny Italian looking dude walking up dressed as various wrestlers and like imitating yeah, them. Yeah, I'm and actually it, on that part of my binge watching of old, uh, old Raw where that commercial just became a thing. But go ahead. Yeah, please. and it says <laughs> except no Im- uh, except no imitations and ironically dressed as Razor in one of them. Yeah. And and somebody tweeted it out and said unless you're Glenn Jacobs dressed like Diesel. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Uh, they just like set themselves up. For it. Is that before or after the the imitators? What imitators? You know what I mean? No, I I really don't. What? I, oh, Isaac Yankum and uh, oh, and, it's definitely uh, before. Okay, yeah, it's I definitely thought, before. I thought, I thought you were messing with me. <laughs> no, I, I really could. no, because you said imitators and this guy in the commercials imitating. So I'm like, what are you talking about? But yeah, this is before. Uh, it's about a year before. I'm I'm it's because I'm in 94 right now and it just started it just happened so it's definitely way before. Yeah, that's yeah. that's funny. Oh well, and far be it from Vince McMahon to go back on you know rants he's made throughout the years. <laughs> Speaking of which, I, well, I, I I don't want to digress too much more from the story. We'll talk about it later. But I there's something I heard from Nash earlier today I wanted to talk about. Uh, also, real quick, touching on that, uh, I, I hated the whole all the gimmicks and stuff, but. I don't care when it says I like Doink. That was the one I liked. Yeah, it's another one who got replaced three, four times. <laughs> Obviously, the most uh, famous replacement. Well, I say famous because he, I, I mean, most people don't know his name, well, but he started the longest. The longest. Run. Yeah, <laughs> I, well, after Matt Bourne would have been Ray Apollo. I think he was there the longest. But... That was the one I liked, honestly. That's the one I'm seeing right now. And I just forgot how funny it was. Right, yeah. But, I'm going to be anyway, a hypocrite, but it's true. It was fun to watch, okay? But, yeah. Right. But, the crowd even chanted, we want Flair at Douglas. <laughs> the <laughs> second shift of Flair would not be caught dead there. I'll just say that. Uh, the show saw the I don't think his of... ass would be there. Yeah, right. <laughs> the uh, show saw the debut of the Dudley brothers, Snot Dudley and Dudley Dudley, managed by Big Dick Dudley. Can we just and... take a second and acknowledge those are all real names? You are not are. making that up. And uh, this is an actual quote from Dave. He says qu- uh, they are, quote, Doing the Hanson Brothers nerd gimmick from the hockey movie Slapshot. God. End quote. Okay. You really have to I, use the R word. That I that's why I said this is a direct quote from Dave. I didn't say it. You could have said seen, stupid or idiotic, you know? Uh in ninety five, apparently Uncle Dave was a lot less PC. But no well, I, and I've now never seen fast forward today where he's the most sexist man on the planet. Yeah, sure. Yeah, right. <laughs> I've never seen Slapshot. I know. I know. The only it reason sucks. I know. <laughs> uh, the only reason I know that's where this gimmick came from is because Raven said it out of his own mouth that he came up oh. with that gimmick after watching the film. Uh, Shout out to here at Puckberg, yeah. by the way, hockey podcast. <laughs> yeah, right. You can hear. Uh, you can hear. Early off in, season, uh, I believe, right now. Ah, okay. Yeah. That's still good stuff. Go listen to the archives. But yeah, <laughs> just you could have just said nerd gimmick. Or something like that. Nope. Well, to be fair, that wouldn't be correct. It, it was like a disabled thing, which, you know, was like. Oh, they were gets crap after or whatever? <laughs> yeah. And like, WWE ah, gets crap okay. for Eugene, and rightfully so, but like, UCW started it. You right. Know? And no, and no mean, hold on. It might not have been like handicapped because like the normal thing, but like the whole thing was like their father had like 100 women. And, and some of them were like, oh, yeah. I believe, like the early the early run was incest. Don't hold me to that, but oh god, I did not know that part of it. Uh, I do know, I do know that. I mean, I don't think they ever tried to say that the Dudleys were like special needs or whatever. I mean, there was Bully Ray who had the stutter or, or uh, yeah. Bubba Ray, excuse me, but they didn't try to say, oh well, you know, he's special or something. Well, not in, not flat out verbally, but it was insinuated. Yeah, uh, Snot Dudley and Dudley Dudley, though I don't think they ever like tried to insinuate that they were, you know, special needs. I could be wrong. Again, I didn't watch ECW, so I, I don't. know. I'm going off of documentaries I've seen. I'm like, yeah, there's like a plethora of things you could have used, and you go with that. That's what Raven <sighs> based it on, man. But look at the evolution of that gimmick. Like, yeah, man. you just spoke and said Bully Ray. I think that was a good one. You should just stay with that. <laughs> we might want to forget yeah. Bubba Ray, but 
I liked, I liked <sighs> Bubba Ray in the Dudley, or like you know the 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 Dudleys from WWF on. But you mean you know. when they made them serious? Yeah, right. Uh, they kept the stuttering thing for like a very short time because I know Bubba they complained about that. Definitely did. And then I think they decided this is too much. Now you know how right. Bruce has still been there. They would have ran that into the ground. Oh, hell I think yeah. they got there right as he was leaving or right after you left, something like that. I'm pretty sure it was like we're talking like in the same couple of months at least. So well, just imagine what he would have did with that crap. Oh, God, right. Well, Bubba said he was like upset because he's like, well, I already kicked that like forever ago back in ECW. It's like, yeah, but like you're going on, they're not thinking that everybody's seen ECW. They're going off the assumption nobody. Imagine seen ECW. that. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Different story, but go on. <laughs> yeah, not. Yeah. Oh my God, it's Cole Carter. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not quite that uh, bad, but you know, still. Either way, uh, to wrap this up, though, uh, to end the show, Shane Douglas was fired by Todd Gordon and choke slammed by 911, which is how they're writing Douglas out of the promotion because he is going to WWF. Finally. We can wrap this damn saga up here. Saga I, that never ended. Kind of like ECW in a way. In, yeah, right. I knew he was in WWF at some point. Uh, wasn't he at SummerSlam? He might have been there doing the backstage things with the, yeah. the grades. I, matter of fact, I think he was now that you say it. Yeah. He's like, oh, I'm, I'm going to write out, you know, I'm going to analyze these matches on my whiteboard or on my blackboard here. And it's like, good God. You know, though, in hindsight, after knowing he was a teacher and all that, it's not as bad looking back now. I mean, Don't it's makes... still stupid, but it makes sense. OK, well, yeah, I was going to say there. That's the difference is it makes sense, but it's dumb. <laughs> it's like it's kind of like Matt Stryker. They they basically did the same damn thing with Matt Stryker. And it's like, why are you repeating a failed gimmick? Like, damn it, pal, it's got to get over this time. Like. No, kind of, kind of explains the second running of the XFL, isn't it? He just like Vince, when he gets an idea that he thinks is great, he will run that damn thing into the ground, whether it's worth it or not. Well, now, hold on. I mean, to be fair, you should you don't want to just tap out on something. Uh, now, I'm not going to say it's not stupid. <laughs> I'm not going to say that at well, all, but it, you, you well, better try to run into the ground and make as much as you can off of it. Yeah, I mean, to a certain extent, yeah, I get it. But, I mean, there are certain things. It's like, dude, it failed. Like, if it bombed that bad and everybody hated it, it's like, just, you're like, you can't tell me that's like, that, oh, it's, this one's got to get over. Like, why? Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. Here we go with another one of these. At the it's ECW. Like Elf career, right? Oh, <laughs> well, well, leave Cassie and work, but no, Avatar. No, damn it, the guy talking to the head. It's got to get over. <laughs> That one I don't totally hate because he finally did get some moderate success, you know, once he went crazy, whatever. And he was a good worker and he I had some personality. Got some big success, but... Yeah, right. And he, he was a good worker. He could talk. He had some personality to him. It was just a matter of, well, let's do It's kind of the, the Brad Armstrong thing. It's like, ah, he's, he's a great worker. Something's got to work, damn it. Nothing ever did, unfortunately. But. Well, nothing did for him, but that's probably not a good comparison. I mean, I guess the outline's good. <laughs> uh, yeah, but anyway, uh, at an ECW Internet Fan Convention, yet again, or at the Internet Fan Convention, New Jack and Cactus Jack both publicly made jokes about Smoky Mountain Wrestling, saying that the promotion bounced their paychecks, although Cactus Jack <laughs> made... Although Cactus Jack made sure to mention that he still likes Cornet personally. Oh, well, then. Well, stay tuned. <laughs> yeah, right. You well, have no and... idea the kind of dribbling old Paulie's going to do. Yeah, right. <laughs> hey, I, I, I know there was a, a thing here because I guess um, Cactus got pissed at Cornet about some booking fee or whatever. That, oh, or one of his checks bounced and he, like, Okay. Fit that's about it, like which, the, that's like the beginning of every ECW story. Go ahead. Right. Well, this well, this was Smoky Mountain, but uh, I guess one of his one of his payoffs bounced from Smoky Mountain, and he got pissed about it, rightfully so. And but the, and Cornette said, "Oh, well, I that was an f up on my part, whatever." And he sent him a new check right away, and that one actually went through. 
But I guess Cactus like got pretty pissed and uh, said some not so nice things. And Cornette was like, you could have just asked me for a new check, man. Like, and in, uh, apparently, and according to Mick Foley backs it up, he said, yeah, he did make it right. He sent me a new check right away. So, you know, whatever. Whereas Paul Heyman is like, oh, well, uh, your check's in the mail. <laughs> Do not cash it for two years, sir. Oh, I like to this. say, by the way, Mick Foley is still one of Jim Cornette's all-time favorite people in the world. So clearly everything was right. <laughs> right. Getting into this saga here. Kevin Sullivan officially replaced Ric Flair as head booker of WCW. There's belief that Sullivan may try to raid ECW to shore up WCW's undercard. Sullivan's wife, Nancy, <sighs> a.k.a. woman, works for ECW, and Sullivan has worked there before and is familiar with their roster. The Headhunters, Public Enemy, Eddie Guerrero, Chris Benoit, Al Snow, Woman, and Shane Douglas are all on WCW's radar, as well as Disco Inferno from USWA. First so of all, all but Shane would go. Uh, Al Snow didn't go oh, to WCW. Okay. Yeah, I don't think Most the Headhunters win. Right. Oh, I thought the head. I thought that was like the name of the. They were headhunting those people. Okay, I missed that. Yeah, no. Uh, okay. The headhunters were the. We talked about them on a previous podcast. Don't ask me when. They were like the squat team in WWF. Yeah, they were in one of the Royal Rumbles. Yeah, ninety five, I think it was ninety six, like maybe. Big. I don't know if they were black or Arab or, or whatever the hell. Uh, but yeah. And, and the reason I say that is because they look black and uh, but they wore like the uh, the headdress like Sabu wears to the ring sometimes. So I I don't know. And their whole gimmick because they were like savages. Yeah. So uh, what the hell island are, would they be from that wears that headdress? <sighs> They're just all over the damn map, man. <laughs> also, real quick, uh, not off top, kind of, but not off, but. Kevin Sullivan being head booker. This is the start of the Dungeon of Doom. So, hell of a oh, time. Just want to point hell that out. Oh, yeah, man. I, I got something about and, and that. And that retrospect is coming, or this is coming here, right? We're doing that? Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sure. <laughs> they actually just did that on 83 Weeks with Eric Bischoff, and it was an entertaining episode. Ooh, I need and, to listen. I really need to listen. I, I'm behind. Okay. That's good to know. Yeah. Bischoff feigned um, most of the heat. Uh, but he did say, he's like, I'll take credit for some of that. It, I, he's like, well, it wasn't my idea, but I let it happen. So, <laughs> uh, my favorite story about that is when he said they, they flew in to, I think Hawaii or something like that to, to meet with, um, uh, <laughs> King Curtis. And he said, they're like in this giant, like two, two story airport. And they're like down below and, uh, from up above, they just hear this big bellowing voice. It's like, Sullivan, my son. And then, like, Sullivan starts running around the airport going, Father, where are you, Father? And Bischoff was like, people yeah. weirded the F out. Uh, it sounds like a Dungeon of Doom. Yeah, okay. Yep. But anyway. It must end um, Hulkamania. Which, hey, I, we, as we covered, kind of did. It's true. But the Steiner brothers are expected to start with ECW soon and work yeah, there go for through. a couple of <laughs> F that uh, work there for a couple of months. Paul Heyman reportedly wants to focus on their own tag teams like Public Enemy and the Gangsters, <laughs> of course. Oh, you, know, <laughs> I, you, know, you, you get a choice between those three teams. You're going to pick those two over the Steiners any day, right? <laughs> yeah, it's not even a contest. God. Uh, so it's Lord. expected. So it's expected that the, that the Steiners will be booked as a six-man team with Taz and likely be feuding with Chris Benoit, Dean Malenko, and Two Cold Scorpio. Okay, good. So they're actually going to face wrestlers. Uh, Very few they have, yes. Plus, the Steiners will almost certainly refuse to put over any ECW teams, so Heyman's just bypassing that problem entirely by not using them as a regular tag team. Why are you even having them on your show, then? I guess just to put on the marquee, the Steiners are here. I don't know. In uh, well, it's this. 95. They're on their way back probably right now at like WCW. So it doesn't really matter. Right. In in Heyman's defense, with him booking them, if they're like, I am, we laugh and say, ha, you know, public enemy and the gangsters, they suck, which they do or did, whatever. But uh, why would you bring in a team that's not going to stick around that long and have them beat all of your guys that are sticking around? So I get that. And I mean, if you have the chance to put the Steiners on your card, you should. So you got yeah, to totally. work around. 
you got to find a workaround somewhere, I guess. So uh, uh, just the best they could do. It just seems like a complete mess. Like I would have avoided it personally, but I, I'm not a booker. I don't fancy myself one. I just Except don't think I bring show. anybody. I just don't. <laughs> I just don't think anybody should use anybody. Like, oh, we're not doing this for you. We're doing what we want. Like, you know what? I don't know the signs, but get the F out. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Uh, Vince McMahon ripped on pro wrestling on Raw, saying that the WWF has a strict anti-violence standard, quote, unlike that undisciplined genre of pro wrestling, end quote. Yeah, anti-violence. Uh, you know, it's just guys pretending to, well, and for real, punching each other in the face, but, you know, whatever. Uh, the this, face. Is, this is a direct response to ECW. After the chance at the King of the Ring pay-per-view... WWF is fully aware of ECW now and well aware that if the media picks up on the violence and adult content of ECW shows, the mainstream will tie it to the WWF. Well, he's not wrong. We, we've discussed yeah, this right. at length. Whenever anything goes wrong, even if it's like someone imitating WCW, WWE gets the blame. Yep. We, yep. Oh. oh, well. So uh, can't fault him for that, I guess. Yeah, right. Well, like, uh, I think it was a story of, like, uh, the end of, like, some kid spray-painted NWO on his baby sister or something like yeah. that. And I was like, I'm sure WWF got blowback for that. Eddie Guerrero. You know, the lost. NWO wouldn't be there for about six years for a cup of yeah, coffee. Right. Now in the archives, by the way. Right. Uh, Eddie Guerrero lost the ECW TV title to Dean Malenko, and it's believed that Guerrero is headed to WCW soon. Yep. Uh, what is it? Nine, well, it's 97 when they have their uh, uncensored, isn't it? Or not uncensored. Um, sold out. Uh, the first one? Yeah. Yeah. Genuinely. Yeah, it's got to be 97. Yeah. So that's ways off. But I don't remember when he pops up in ECW or in WCW. I want to say it is later like, this year. It's a random night show in 95. I can tell you that. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I remember him being there because I, I remember he was one of the people in the crowd watching Ric Flair versus Arn Anderson at one point. So it's a it's random thing. September, to remember, so it's very yeah, close. He, yeah, he's about he's about to be gone. Uh, Axel Rotten has reportedly left ECW. <gasps> oh, no. Oh, no. And he did. I hope they survived the hit. <laughs> and uh, he debuted in USWA this week as a baby face. Rotten wants to go to the WWF and reportedly feels that USWA is a better stepping stone to get there than ECW. He and Rotten. <laughs> <sighs> just thought the thought of him in the movie just makes me laugh. Yeah. Yeah. Ain't going to happen, buddy. He and Rotten buried Axel on the mic at the next ECW show, saying that he doesn't care about ECW fans and left to go, quote, to the land of midgets and toe suckers, the USWA. Do I, I want to know? I don't even know what the hell that means. I mean, did they legitimately have little people wrestlers on the roster? They, they, they probably had like smaller guys. That's what we meant. I just, yeah, I it's like, is he referring to Jerry Lawler? Because that was always like, that was always a thing. Jerry Lawler was, oh, he's short. Like, yeah, he's not a tall dude, but there was. It's better than you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this, I mean, which, I mean you, TJ, not Axel Rotten, by the way. <laughs> wow. Uh, there was, oh, yeah. Jerry, well, Jerry Lawler and Axel Rotten. I mean, you're going to pick Axel every time. Hell yeah. yeah. Why are you giggling? Uh, uh, there was actually a story um, Jim, Jim Cornette talked about where I can't remember. I think it was maybe AWA or somebody. Somebody got pissed because they were booking Andre the Giant at the time. I think, or maybe Andre himself got pissed because he went to uh, Memphis and faced Jerry Lawler. And there was a there is a uh, a headline with like a picture of the match, and it said "Midget Body Slams Andre the Giant." Wow! <laughs> <laughs> like, uh. Good God! Like, first of all, yeah, I mean, compared to other wrestlers, Lawler is short, but I'm pretty sure he's at least average height for a dude. Like, I met him at the Major Pod live show, and he's. Not like a small dude at all, but he's not like huge, but you know, for a, for a wrestler, he's probably on the shorter side. I mean, he's, he's under six feet. I know that, but like, really, uh, he's literally the king of Memphis. So I don't give a damn. <laughs> yeah. Right. <sighs> so 
this is this sucks right here. But Taz suffered a neck injury at an ECW show this week after landing bad on a pile driver and is expected to be out at least a few weeks and possibly a couple of months. This is pretty much the beginning of the neck problems that ended his career. He never fully recovered. Taz has said that it was so bad that when he went to the hospital, the doctors couldn't believe he walked in on his own. That's crazy. That's almost as awesome as Randy Couture walking himself to a hospital after a heart attack. Almost. Yeah, right. Uh, on ECW TV, they made multiple references to Ken Shamrock beating Dan Severn at UFC 6 because Severn is the NWA champion and Paul Heyman wanted to rub it in the face of NWA promoter Dennis Carluzzo. Oh. Hella effing random. He's, yeah, he's using hella like he's a Californian like that. <laughs> ECW just love taking cheap shots at literally everybody. Oh, wow. It sounds familiar. Hmm. Yeah, right. <laughs> I, uh, but going to the other end of the country, at an ECW show in Florida, Public Enemy invited fans to get into the ring and dance with them. As fans piled into the ring, the ring collapsed. Uh, you don't say. Fans... Uh, this is a famous thing, too. This is almost up there with that chair thing. Yep. There, There's two Wasn't things I can say. called House Party, too? Like, was Probably. Like... Uh, I mean, you you gonna I, what? You get a whole four ECW fans in that ring to collapse it because I I, mean, I can imagine you know when you've seen ECW fans, you only takes four. Anyways, exactly. <laughs> and I can imagine the straw hat guy wasn't that big. Well, well, no, but I can imagine that that ringside area also had a lovely smell to it. <laughs> and we come right back to it. Exactly. Again, again, folks, we're full circle on this pod. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, that, that's called a callback. <laughs> but, uh, so no one was injured, but the ring was badly damaged. So was it worth it? Uh, ECW went on to use that footage repeatedly in tape commercials. Yeah. Uh, yep. To this Used day. To death. Uh, last story we got for this uh, this third of the year here. At another ECW show in Florida, some fans started chanting boring during a Taz and Eddie Guerrero versus Dean Malenko and Two Cold Scorpio match. That actually Ooh, sounds man, like real wrestling. <laughs> yeah. Why? What do you want weapons, damn it? <laughs> well, that led to other fans chanting, shut the f*** up at those fans. <laughs> and it turned into a mess. After the match, Eddie Guerrero oh, grabbed... Oh, I didn't realize it was nice and clean beforehand. Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> Well, after the match, Eddie Guerrero grabbed the microphone and said, quote, you pay your ticket or you pay for your tickets and you have every right to cheer for who you want and what you want. But when you uh, depreciate someone's work, somebody's athletic ability, it only shows your education, brother. End quote. Uh, this, <laughs> right. This reportedly got the biggest pop of the show since the majority of fans were into the match and appreciated it, while the boring chant fans were just a vocal minority. Vocal minority uh, equals drunk, but yeah. Right. Uh, we came to see blood and guts and barbed wire and crap. And maybe some tips. <laughs> Where's that Arab feller that glues himself up? <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Am I wrong? I would. Yeah. An Arab feller. <laughs> oh. I mean, they probably would have said something a lot more offensive than I'm not. I have repeat, zero but... doubt. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. But anyway, yeah. So diving into August, y'all. Oh, uh, yeah. August, August of I miss spring, Max. 95. I honestly have only seen a couple episodes of his show. I haven't seen yeah. the whole thing, but. Eddie Guerrero's deal with WCW seems to have fallen through because they won't offer him any kind of guaranteed contract. He'll probably be staying what? with. <laughs> I yeah. thought that was their whole shtick. Right. Uh, he'll probably be staying with ECW for now. WCW has openly wanted Guerrero, Al Snow, Chris Benoit, Sabu, and Dean Malenko in order to up the work rate on the new shows. So far, they haven't managed to get any of them. Because the company hasn't really been able to get any new stars uh, over in years. Plus, due to uh, the treatment of guys like Brian Pillman and Steve Austin, a lot of hot indie stars are hesitant about going to WCW for fear that their careers might stall and go nowhere. Well, now, hold on. Isn't Austin proof positive that if you go to ECW, you become a 
or become a huge star later. Kind of goes against their point, doesn't it? Well, no, they're saying if you get, they're saying WCW hasn't made any new stars. On the contrary, they did. They just gave them the WWE. So again, it goes against their point. <laughs> well, then, then they didn't make him. So that's oh, it. They, 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 had plant, him. they planted the seed and then they let WWE water him. Yeah, you well, know, it's like so. they, they had him they, and they let him go. ECW, that's all they had was new guys. So they had to work with that. They didn't really have any pre made stars. Are you, are you saying that uh, Public Enemy and the Dudley Boys weren't pre made stars? Oh, yeah. No, excuse me. I retract my statement. Uh, Thank you. But that was always the knock against Eric Bischoff was uh, if they weren't a star before they got to him, they were never going to be a star. It's not false, except for Goldberg. That's yeah, it. Goldberg's one of the only dudes. <laughs> Because, I mean, and you can't even point to someone like Sting because he was a star back in the late 80s. So Eric Bischoff just inherited him. So ECW drew about 1,400 people to an outdoor show in Middleton, New York, which is impressive since they don't have much of the way of TV there. They're on the it's impressive MSG because Network. nobody's ever heard of Middleton. But yes. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, they're on the MSG Network on cable, but the show moves around and doesn't really have a time slot, seemingly airing at random. <laughs> Good Lord. Uh, so whenever they need to fill time on their schedule, they just shove in ECW. <laughs> uh, there was also a lot of bad weather, which has made the cra- or which made the crowd even more impressive. Uh, if anybody wants, it's on Peacock Hardcore TV from August 8th, 1995. There you go. I was just giving people crap to watch. Here, watch this. Hey, we're uh, we're reviewing crap. So, <laughs> yeah, <you> <laughs> it's true. Ah, but anyway, so uh, Ricky Morton is negotiating with ECW fresh off getting fired from Smoky Mountain and USWA and may come and he may come in as a member of Raven's group. Mm. What? Man. Yeah, no. He's been a part of some weird stuff in his day, but what? Ricky oh, yeah. Robert. But I think of Your Ricky foundation. Morton, I think, oh, he'd do well with Raven. And, oh, you know, you know Stevie very, Richards. He'd have a look that would fit. I can see it. I'm not uh, saying Rocker it would be from great. The 80s. Yeah, I mean, like, think about it. Look at his look. And think about him with, like, Raven and Sick Boy and Kid Man and Reese. I mean, I feel like if they gothed him up a little bit, it could work. It's not that far-fetched. Well, this was an I'm ECW not smart you had, either. you had Raven. Uh, at one point, they had, I don't know if they have Kimona yet, but... Then they got uh, Stevie Richards and Blue Meanie. Like, and then you're throwing Ricky F. and Morton into that group. I, I just I don't even know what to say at that point. The Sunshine Network in Florida pulled this week's ECW show off the air due to concerns about an angle and the future of the ECW Sunshine relationship is up in the air. The angle was Sandman hitting Mikey Whipwreck with a Singapore cane while woman was on the microphone talking about how she loved violence and acted like she was getting off on it. Oh, God. The Sunshine Network executives apparently found it to be too offensive and pulled that episode. Man, I'd love to hear what they thought about later angles. (laughs) Like, that's downright tame compared to some other Uh, crap. Uh, Paul (laughs) Paul Heyman negotiated with the network, telling them that they could bleep anything that they found offensive in order to get the show back on the air. There's also belief that there's an uh, an issue with ECW's contract with the network, which both sides are working on. Heyman says that he's confident that the show will be back on the air later this week. To which I say... (laughs) Chris Benoit, Marty Jannetty, and Luna Vachon all no-showed the latest ECW show for various reasons, leading to Paul Heyman having to change booking plans. Cactus Jack was turned heel, which uh, would have... (sighs) Or which had been planned for later in the year, but had to be done immediately due to the new booking. Benoit reportedly injured his shoulder in Japan. Even though he couldn't work, Heyman asked Benoit to, to, uh, to at least show up to, uh, so that the fans wouldn't feel screwed, but Benoit refused. <laughs> Gennetti, uh, Marty <sighs> Gennetti simply no-showed without even calling, so he's probably done in ECW. No surprise there. Uh, that's so out of character. I don't know if I buy that. 95. Uh, I think he's on his way back to WWE. And he'll probably no show there, too. 
<laughs> and Luna Vachon had legitimate uh, legitimate transportation problems due to Hurricane Aaron. That sucks. Oh, oh, that man. one's excusable, right? Okay. Yeah, right. Uh, the the Benoit one, it's like, I know you're hurt, but at least show up and wave. Like, what? Why? Like, just have him sit home and rehab, dude. Good Lord. Because you're going to have to pay him now if he shows up. I mean, he might be under a guaranteed contract, but I'm going to laugh thinking about that. A so, guaranteed contract in ECW, man. That's, uh, what are you guaranteed with that contract? <laughs> they have a better shot of finding Bigfoot than getting that contract paid out, but yeah. <laughs> right. So the financial situation of ECW is interesting. I like their use of the word interesting. I think we've After, already discussed this earlier in the pod. That usually means terrible. <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, after Todd Gordon uh, basically bailed out of the company, several people were owed money, one of them being a guy named Rob Feinstein, who was owed around $5,000. In hindsight, uh, we shouldn't be giving that man anything. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, I mean, that, that $5,000 will help to uh, pay his court fees later. But anyway, uh, that's Feinstein... That's not even enough for a freaking retainer, dude. What are you talking about? That, well, that's true. Uh, Feinstein handled videotape distribution for the company and wasn't told that he'd be paid or excuse me. And he was told that he would be paid back in monthly installments. Uh, last month, Feinstein was brought out on TV. And as part of an angle, Paul Heyman talked about Feinstein being an employee and blamed him for the ECW video sales business being such a disorganized mess. Tapes were being sent late. There were poor quality tapes, etc. Then they had 911 choke slam him. After that, he came out later with a neck brace, and they ripped Feinstein's pants off, and Heyman made a bunch of small penis jokes about him as the crowd chanted similar things. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, this age he would use, is so bad. He would use that small penis for some uh, unlawful activities later on, but uh, regardless. Uh, basically, the- should have just cut it off while he had his pants down. So we didn't know what he's going to do. <laughs> right. Uh, basically, the I'm ECW... that, by the way, you do gross stuff like that. You should lose your junk. It's disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it. I, I'm, so, I'm sorry. I can't help but laugh when you say you lose your junk. <laughs> I agree, but it's just it's I, funny. I could have said I could have said penis, but junk's funnier. Yeah, right. So basically, the ECW video sales department is a mess and Heyman managed to kayfabe blame Feinstein for it. Then after ECW ended up increasing their debt to him rather than paying him off. Feinstein quit the company because he hadn't uh, because they hadn't paid him. So now ECW still owes him money in their video distribution or and their video distribution is still a mess. But now everyone blames Feinstein for it instead of blaming ECW. Whew, out of the woods, man. Heyman just knows how to feign the heat, doesn't he? You have to admire that, dude. Yeah, I there's something impressive about it. Not great. but impressive. Uh, Paul Heyman was previously dead set against ECW doing a pay-per-view, feeling that the company wasn't ready yet. But lately, he seems to have changed his mind and is said to be considering trying to make it happen soon. We discussed it's going to be about a year and a half from now. Uh, after weeks of... Actually, hold on. You know what? I think we're forgetting something. I think it was going to be earlier, but the mass transit incidents pushed it oh, up. Oh, God. Or they, yeah. canceled it for, they canceled it first, I should say, and then they put it back on, but then it was later... Yeah, and literally had to be later in the day. Yeah, it's kind of like, uh, you know, one of the reasons they pushed back the Flash is because they were hoping that some of the heat around Ezra Miller would die down before they actually put that damn thing in theaters. Uh, right. I mean, good luck with that. But, you know, whatever. <laughs> I think I think that's one of the things with Aquaman, too, as well. They're like, well, we don't want to release this damn thing while uh, one of the stars of the film is, you know, in court. But anyway, uh, after weeks of on-again, off-again negotiations, WCW appears to have reached agreements with Chris Benoit, Eddie Guerrero, Dean Malenko, and Sabu. All are expected to debut sometime in September or October. All four men have primarily been working with New Japan Pro Wrestling, and word is that New Japan helped put the deal together. The deal apparently will see all four men primarily work for New Japan Pro Wrestling and will work for WCW when they aren't being booked in Japan and can work indie shows uh, when neither of them or neither like, of them are using it. It was like a hell of a deal back in back in that day. Yeah, right. Uh, the only places they can't work for, by the way, are going to be the WWF, Smoky Mountain Wrestling, and ECW. So 
And, you know, as we know, of course, this would be the last time that it would ever be a big deal that Benoit, Guerrero, and Malenko jumped to another company. <laughs> they would actually it. add one, too. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, well, this time it was with Sabu. The next time around, it was with uh, Perry Saturn. And meanwhile, Shane Douglas is like, hey, I'm here. <laughs> like, oh, uh, yeah, Shane. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, you stay right there, buddy. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll come back for you, I promise. We're just going to get a pack of cigarettes. We'll be back. <laughs> uh, Paul Heyman. Let's go get a pack Sabu. of cigarettes and a lottery scratcher. He must have won on a lottery scratcher because he never came back. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, Paul Heyman and Sabu reportedly had reached a secret agreement for Sabu to return to ECW, but that fell apart when WCW came calling. Heyman is still trying to negotiate with him if Sabu decides to come back to ECW rather than go to WCW. Uh, Heyman uh, has promised to build the promotion around him as a top star, but will most likely uh, Sabu will probably head to, head to WCW. I can word. He would head to WCW, but then he would have to leave because he was too extreme for TV. Yeah, right. And found, and he finds out that he's fired by calling the hotline. <laughs> Who the hell calls the hotline? <laughs> well, apparently he had an inkling because he was watching the show and they said, ah, yeah, you know, a certain uh, a certain former star or whatever the hell. I can't remember what they said. Uh, somebody is, you know, has been released. A bingo, a bingo and, hall indie. Yeah, right. They're like, uh, well, somebody's been released. And he's like, oh, who is it? And he paid and called the hotline. And he's like, oh, it's uh, it's me. <laughs> so he paid to find out he was no longer getting paid. Did I get that right? right. Yep. Okay. He had to pay them to find <laughs> out he was fired. Good. And people said Bishop was a bad businessman. I call BS on that. This is proof right here. I want to say that even Six and Austin had their FedEx paid for. <laughs> <laughs> not Sabu, man. <sighs> F him. Because oh, look. I'm sorry. I'm going to piss some people off here, but Steve Austin on the Mount Rushmore Wrestling. X Pac, damn good wrestler. Sabu, eh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> well, because the, shun the Sunshine Network pulled ECW's TV show off their air in Florida. ECW has canceled their upcoming tour of the area because that show was their only uh, was their only means of promotion. Paul Heyman and Todd Gordon are flying to Florida this week to meet with the Sunshine Network executives to try to work out a deal with their contract, which has been canceled. Oh, man. Uh, sucks for them. Uh, also, Paul Heyman is negotiating with pay-per-view companies to attempt to get ECW on pay-per-view. His initial selling point had been plans to do a Benoit Guerrero Malenko triangle match, but with all three now headed to WCW, that's out the window. He does a triangle match, still though. Yeah, with uh, well, one of the workers is fairly competent. The other two, I'll let you decide. <laughs> two. It's a random ass trio, too. <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, we in your cars, right? We did that. Uh, not that show, say, that I can remember, but we, I don't know, we've, we've done some crap in WCW, or ECW, so I, 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 yeah, I don't remember. Wrapping up the month of August, though, Two Cold Scorpio is the latest ECW star that WCW is trying to poach. Paul Heyman wants to keep Scorpio and has talked to him about uh, making Scorpio a top heel and champion. But ECW doesn't have the contracts, and Heyman is wary of putting the belt on someone just to have them leave. I mean, that's fair. Uh, Scorpio reportedly has told Heyman that he won't go back to WCW for less than what he was making there before, which is 120 grand. And WCW isn't offering nearly that much to guys these days. Well, they are to some guys. <laughs> you got an ECW smell, and good lord, what smell that is, versus a WWE smell. So, yeah. Right. Well, I mean, like, Scorpio's great and all, but uh, I don't think they were, like, clamoring, oh, man, we got to get Scorpio back. I mean, the last time he was here, he was a, a top guy. Well, him and, I believe, Buff were the tag champions, right? Or, were they? they were, but, I mean, that was just, like, a random-ass tag team, you know? Yeah, I, I mean, you can say that about any Buff Bagwell tag team, to be fair. That's true. Well, him and... Uh, our, 
where, you know, Scorpio and uh, freaking Shane Douglas, I mean, he was there before as a tag champion, and he didn't see them clamoring to get his ass back. Apparently, he burned a lot of his own bridges on him. Yeah, that one, I, I don't know what the hell. I mean, obviously, he hated Ric Flair, and he made a big stink about it all the time. Ric Flair did have some pull in WCW for quite a while, so... Uh, yeah, you don't exactly want to go against the head booker of a company if uh, you ever want to work there. Just ask uh, Brian Pillman. You know, he, he respects that booker man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I but, didn't respect uh, him as much as Chris Milmar respected him. Too soon? Oh, my God. Too soon, right? Sorry. Uh, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, that For those who September. aren't aware, I'm not making a death joke. It's actually more of a marital joke, but. Yeah, I get right. heat for that. So but he he respected his his uh, his wife. I'll say that. Yeah. Uh, well, not for long, but either way. And uh, you did it. <laughs> I did. I didn't. Uh, we're gonna take our next break of the podcast. On the other end of this, we got the final four months of the year. Right after this. <laughs> Follow the main event marks at facebook.com forward slash main event marks pod on Twitter at main event underscore marks and on Instagram both at main event underscore marks and at main event collector. What's up, everybody? I am the hardest part of the ring, the host of the Apron Bump podcast. Ugh, another wrestling podcast. How many times can I listen to fans tell me who needs a push, who doesn't need a push, who brings Vince's coffee these days? Enough! The Apron Bump is about the journey. It's about nostalgia. It's about discovering new forms of wrestling to really tickle your pickle as a wrestling fan. The podcast brings you reviews of wrestling events all over the world, whether it's WWF, WWE, WCW, ECW. We even cover the golden eras of Ring of Honor, Progress, TNA, and more promotions in the future as well. New episodes every Wednesday. Bump day. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Go to apronbump.com or go to your favorite podcast platform or YouTube and subscribe today for the most diverse, fan-friendly wrestling podcast in the world. I'm hard. The main event marks are available wherever you get podcasts and on YouTube. Find all of our links on our link tree at linktr.ee forward slash main event marks. And we're back. We're back. Oh, we're going to be moving into September. Huh? So first story of September here. Uh, ECW had one of their hottest shows ever. I feel like that's the fifth time I just I've said that. Yeah, on the podcast. I'm sure one of their greatest matches ever were on the show too. But go on. Oh well, yeah, <laughs> uh, and it included Paul Heyman openly declaring war on WCW. Oh well, then uh, Heyman gave a long speech to the crowd, talking about WCW, Eric Bischoff, and even Ted Turner, and inciting the crowd to chant lots of horrible things about them. Oh yeah, because he was the maestro and he could lead them along to whatever the hell stupid crap he wanted to. Uh, it was just real quick. Can you just pause real quick? So he's declaring war on the bigger guy, and he's got mm-hmm. 20 people on his side. And this is yeah. supposed to be impressive. Well, that's the that's the thing. It's like if you declare war on somebody who doesn't even know you're at war, are you even really at war? That's, I guess with yourself. That's like uh, I, I I don't want to make any offensive jokes here because I you know and like call out specific countries or whatever, but it's like, it's like you know a tiny ass little country with no real uh, weaponry or anything like that. Say, like, oh, we're at war with the United States of America. And, oh, uh, that'll take up a lot of our time, I guess. <laughs> Good comparison, but I, <laughs> yeah, I just, just I'm trying to say like, what well, what was your end game here, dude? You I weren't going to beat them. They were being WWE at the time, I believe, or about to start. And so they're taking down the king, at least for a little bit. And yeah. you, the little pebble in the shoe, is going to do something? Yes, <laughs> yeah. I guess, man. Well, I mean, hey, you do you. Sounds like a little right. man complex to me. But <laughs> Well, you got to stir up controversy somehow, I guess. But... Controversy does create cash, but the Not controversy... That... Cre- but the problem is, in order to create the cash, people have to give a damn about you. No one gave a damn about ECW. <laughs> Except for uh, the 40 people wrong. that watched nightly on TV. Yep. Well, 
uh, it was acknowledged that several guys were leaving for WCW, but Heyman made it sound like New Japan Pro Wrestling had coerced them in order to help the guys save face with the fans. Uh, Heyman and everyone else was respectful to the wrestlers leaving, with Eddie Guerrero, Chris Benoit, and Dean Malenko all getting standing ovations and giving speeches about how much they loved being in ECW and hoped to return there one day. To which I say... <laughs> <laughs> sure. Well, on a technicality, Eddie and Benoit did return. Uh oh, yeah. God, I'm not counting that crap. Hey, I clearly said technicality. Okay, <sighs> clear as day. I say technicality. Yeah. That's that's <laughs> that in name only kind of crap, and well, barely even that. Than, it was better than the Tuesday night show. I'll tell you that the pay per view. Yeah. Well, I ain't saying much. But after the Guerrero Malenko match, uh, both men were carried back to the locker room on the shoulders of other wrestlers. Heyman announced that it would that they had reached a deal with Triple A and that Rey Mysterio Jr. would face psychosis at the next ECW show, as well as Conan appearing. Oh well, at least he's going to appear. So, huh. uh, I just like another Wednesday Night Dynamite. Hey, this person's going to appear. Don't expect to see him wrestle or anything, but right. they're going to speak. Ooh. I didn't put this in here, by the way, but uh, later on, Uncle Dave says, oh, I finally saw got around to seeing uh, Rey Mysterio versus uh, Psychosis. Uh, it was uh, four and a half stars. Oh, wow. I just like how he's just like now the authority there. The authorities weighed in. Well, yeah. I mean, we were we were sitting around waiting until then. Like, what, 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 do, what do we do? Should we watch it? Should we care? Is it good? We need the answers, Uncle Douche. <laughs> uh, ECW introduced a guy dressed as one of the Dudley brothers doing a sign gimmick where he holds up signs at ringside for all the heels. That would be the debut of Sign Guy Dudley. AKA the future... dangerously. Yep, there you go. That gimmick was so stupid. He did from behind. It did look like Paul E, though. I'll say that. And he did all the mannerisms and stuff, you know? As he dumb did. as it was. It was spot on. I don't know what it was with ECW and like impersonators of people, but you know, whatever. So it's, it's uh, okay. Do you know the Jericho appreciation society does that whole, Hey, uh, AW galaxy appreciate us. They say, appreciate us. Like Roman says, uh, acknowledge me. Acknowledge me. Well, well, what, what's what Jim Cornette says about them. I'm going to apply it right here. That's a good idea. Remind us that the real stars are on the other channel. (laughs) Yep. So you do with these impersonations. The BWO, as funny as it was, all you did was remind us that the NWO is making trillions of dollars on the other channel. You would never see (laughs) somebody from WWE do it like ripping off somebody from AEW. Ever. It's not above them. They did the billionaire Ted things, but nowadays, no, it's a lot more professional now. So Yeah, plus they have nobody like going against them. So I, you can say whatever you want about AEW, but it's like they're they might be doing fine little business out there on their own, but they're not competing. Sorry. Uh, but anyway, Ron Simmons reportedly gave notice to ECW, and he's leaving. They haven't used him in months anyway, and he said that he and Butch Reed are returning to WCW to reform Doom. Ah! There it is. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Go right, watch that show. You're missing an amazing show. It's on HBO Max. I think I binged it. It's on HBO Max, now. and it's literally <laughs> yeah. on True TV anytime you turn it on. So there you go. It, it is a fan freaking fantastic show. Go watch it. Makes me sad that Joe's not there anymore, but yeah. It's yeah. Good. Uh, Vince McMahon took part in a QA on America Online after the latest Raw show. He tried There's to be a 90s funny. one for you? <laughs> yeah. Uh, he tried to be funny and was mostly dishonest in answering questions and talk down to people. He also knocked ECW as being too violent. Quote, I believe the ECW style in general is deplorable where their use of violence is concerned. Uh, that's not to say that some things aren't done well in ECW and not that WWF could, uh, could learn from everyone, but WWF deplores violence that is typical of ECW. <sighs> It's just very ironic sure. knowing what's coming. <laughs> right. Yeah, they're not they're not about to start the well, I mean, we're a couple of years away still, but you know, they're not about to do the hardcore division. 
have, you know. Well, that wasn't as bad as you would think. That was more comedy at the end of the day. Like, think about any WWE hardcore match in that era. There was no blood, really. Yeah. Really wasn't. So it's like. Well, it's like the, <sighs> the main. Uh, and this wasn't, they didn't use a bunch of weapons and crap, but it's like the main event of WrestleMania 15 was nothing but a brawl throughout the whole arena. Yeah. And then you've got like every other segment on the show with bro boobs. I mean, I don't know about you, but I wasn't complaining about that, but <laughs> show us your bobs. <laughs> oh, man. The latest ECW TV episode was almost entirely dedicated to the final Eddie Guerrero versus Dean Malenko match. And Uncle Dave says that it was probably the best wrestling TV show this year. <laughs> okay, so we already heard that. But I don't know if we pointed this out. This is 1995. Again, maybe we have. How low is that bar? Right. And even uh, the best show, I highly doubt, is coming from ECW. But again, I didn't see it. So I'm not going to sit here and be like, no. But for, any, for I anybody doubt who it, does. Like in my brain. Like maybe right, it was, I, though. Yeah. But I'm not going to go with it. But. I do, too. <laughs> I, I'm there with you. Uh, for anybody who does want to watch it, by the way, it's Hardcore TV episode 123 on Peacock. So there you go. And also, to be fair, you can't go wrong with uh, those two wrestlers. Okay? Right. You can't. I mean, and if it's bad, there's something wrong. Right. I mean, WCW used the hell out of them. So there you go. Uh, it was very emotional and treated like a special moment. And in the end, Guerrero gave a speech. He said, quote, Art, I hope I made you proud. And quote, because it was apparently Art Barr's idea for them to go to ECW and become stars in the U.S. Uncle Dave. Oh, this part. Wow. Uncle Dave also says that Joey Styles is the bar as far as uh, far as the best announcer in the business this year. I don't think I disagree with that. Jim Ross wasn't on TV full time yet. Mm, yeah, well, yeah. I mean, he was inconsistent. So, I mean, uh, you got what Lawler and uh, McMahon. Uh, they're not. I want to say McMahon and Lawler were doing Raw. This is 95, right? Yeah, they might have had like Mr. Perfect, Doc Hendricks filling in yeah. here and there. And none of them Nitro were like exceptional. Was Nitro, you know what? Actually, we're going overall. Tony Schiavone, I still think, was one of the better ones this year. No, Greg, if you listen to Uncle Dave, he sucked. And he was one That's of the right. worst announcers in the business. So, now, so was uh, Corey Graves. I forgot. He's probably the best one right oh, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. right. <laughs> uh, I, I wonder what Uncle Dave thinks of old Tony now. That he's on, you know, his favorite show. <laughs> I didn't look at the... I still like him, but I mean, I know I get crap for that from people, but I... Sorry, I like Tony Schiavone. I think he's good. I'm not saying yeah. he's, like, amazing, but I don't think he's bad, like, what people think. But that's just me. Yeah, right. Well, I'm trying to think... I'm trying to see here. He said that Tony was the worst, right? Uh, he, yeah, he always he, voted him one of the worst. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, what, what month are we in right now? Uh, D. Uh, this. Oh, um, September. Right? Shoot, September. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. to be fair, I'm in, you know, not to ever defend Uncle Douche, but he hasn't heard Mongo yet. He's like a few weeks away. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah. Uh, by the way, Corey Graves won worst announcer of the year this past year in the Wrestling Observer. Yeah, Michael Cole, yeah. Michael Cole won it the year before that. Corey Graves won it the year before that. Mother of yeah, God. go ahead. Yeah, I no. Michael Cole in 2020, absolutely. I I'll say that all day. Michael Cole now ain't even touching that. So <laughs> right, uh, it's Jonathan night Jonathan, but... Jonathan Coachman won it in 2018. I'll yeah, give him that. I mean, I can't really argue. Booker T in 2017, sure. Eh, I don't uh, know if he's the worst. I can see it, but him and Vic Joseph yeah. on NXT now some good chemistry. So, uh, and then David Otunga in 2016. Yeah, well, he, he was just around kind of long enough to have a damn opinion on that, though. That's kind of unfair. He's there for like, like a cup of coffee. He, well, when he was on commentary, he was like a house plant. He just he was this kind of there. Well, I'm not denying that, but I just don't think you can stop someone with the worst of the year when they're only there for a minute. Yeah. Well, hey, man, uh, Michael Cole won it from 2009 to 2012. <laughs> Hell yeah. Keep it going. <laughs> anyway, uh, so the Eliminators are expected to start with ECW soon, and Uncle Dave says to expect them to be given a different gimmick. Whoa! 
<laughs> I mean, they do. Start, I think but yeah. they might have been a little bit more badass in CW, actually. So if that's right. kind of different, I would assume. Right. I don't know where the hell they were before ECW, but whatever. So I such an underrated team, by the way. I just want to say that. Oh, yeah. Cronus was good. He just never really. I mean, he never went anywhere except after uh, ECW, unfortunately. So WCW fired Steve Austin this week. Austin has been widely considered as possibly the best young wrestler in the U.S., but his career stalled in the last year or so because WCW doesn't know how to make new stars. Austin has. Yeah, also... that's going to age like milk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Austin has also been in the doghouse with WCW management for the last year due to a reputation of not exactly keeping quiet about his discontent with how he's being used. Oh, Austin. imagine that. A guy who can go on and make a billion dollars knew what he was worth. My God. Yeah. And you know what? That didn't stop in the WWF because according to Jim Ross, he was always extremely vocal. So it's not like he <sighs> quit doing that and then all of a sudden he was great. I don't want to defend it. I mean, you shouldn't be like, but I mean, if you're the top guy and you're making all the damn money, you should get a lot of leeway, I would assume. Yeah, well, and he had that, you know, everybody goes to Hogan with a, well, that doesn't work for me, brother, and <laughs> rightfully so, but Austin did the same damn thing. I mean, he didn't say Kurt, that doesn't work for me, brother, but, you know. Yeah. But correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think Hogan ever walked out of a damn building at a protest for doing to do something. Maybe he just didn't do it. Or, right. you know, whatever, but I don't think he just flat out got on a plane and left. And I'm not right. crapping on but Austin's one of my all-time favorites, but just, you know, you got to be fair. I don't think anybody flat out told him that, like, I don't think anybody was, like, stupid enough with Hulk Hogan to, like, and, and brass enough. Like, with, with Austin, I think they were like, listen, you're going to effing do it. Yeah. And with Hogan, I don't think anybody ever spoke that way to him, ever. He, it was just a, hey, uh, we booked you doing this. Mm, I think we'll be back <laughs> in my locker room drinking, later, brother. You also have to, um, you have something to remember, too. Around this time, when Hogan was, like, the guy... They had no choice. There's no secondary guy. You know, he maybe like Macho Man or Warrior or something, but no. With Austin, there's a bunch of other options they had. Not as big, one, not as big, but like, you know, it wasn't like, oh, make or break. Austin's not here. We're, we're screwed. On the contrary. Yeah, right. Yep. Uh, again, not as easy, you know, but. Right. Well, Austin tore his tricep in June in Japan and has been out of action ever since. He was about six weeks away from returning when he was fired. He'll likely wind up in ECW, according to Uncle Dave, since he's good friends with Paul Heyman. Hey, you got be... one. <laughs> but it would be a significant pay cut. You don't say. Hey, he got two. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Holy uh, crap, folks. If you hit me with a trifecta here on the next one, I'm going to crap my pants. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. These next two stories. Ah, man. Well, this first one especially, but hang on, hang on. Let me get a sip of water for this one. Okay. I mean, Hello. there's there's a worse one later than this involving this team, but the so Mustafa wow. of the you really ought to set him up. <laughs> well, Mustafa of the Gangsters was involved in an incident at a hotel before an ECW show where he apparently went nuts at the hotel, and police had to come and drag him out, so he missed the show. Mother of God. Hey, it's Mustafa this time. Do I? <laughs> That's a change up. Do I act surprised here or what? Tell me what my reaction should be. I mean, you're, you're the editor, you're the producer, the host. What's my reaction supposed to be to this? <laughs> uh, something like. <laughs> <laughs> hey, here's uh, one, goody. Tell me another one. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so, I, I don't uh, know, man. But. This next one this is just stupid. It's not like over the top or anything, but uh, two more Dudley brothers have debuted in ECW. One of them is a guy doing an Indian gimmick using the name Dances with Dudleys. <laughs> uh, it's offensive, but kind of funny. Uh, and the other guy is a big dude named Chubby Dudley. No, this is not Bully Ray or Bubba Ray. Uh, also, wow. the Eliminator... Two and one for you, dude. Yeah, right. Uh, also, the Eliminators debuted, and contrary to rumors, they're not changing gimmicks. How about oh, that? Thank the good Lord. 
Yeah, all right. Uh, Rey Mysterio Jr. and Psychosis debuted for ECW and got over Yoch with their match. Yeah, that match is actually really good if people find it anywhere. Oh, they it's... better be. Yeah, these two, I don't think these two ever had a bad match against each other, be it ECW it or WCW. Yeah. Psychosis gets like sidelined a lot when people start, you know, talk about like great luchadors. He was really good. I mean, he wasn't like a major star, but he was really good. Uh, I agree. I think we've already had this conversation about Laparka too. I said the same thing. Right. Uh, to wrap up the month, ECW may be filing a lawsuit against Global Distributions, which is a company that handled their merchandise, saying that Global owes ECW money. <laughs> and that's a, well, that's a pot, change up. You are black, says the kettle. <laughs> Mother of God. <laughs> uh, but in the meantime, Paul Heyman has apparently secured a deal to put out ECW merch himself. Oh, well, good. You gotta keep uh, pumping I... that out. Didn't I see something that Bubba Dudley has a helping hand in there? Or was it Taz? Or was it Stevie Richards? Somebody. Somebody else helps him. Uh, yeah, not that that's I, bad. I'm not poking fun at it. I'm just saying, like, you know. I, I know there was a combo in the office of EC, quote unquote office, or Paul Heyman's parents' basement, whatever. Of That could be an I, office. Hold on. I, I, yeah, your I'm office even, is a bedroom in your house, so shut up. It is. Uh, but, so, yeah, you can't uh, knock them. <laughs> None wrong uh, with that. I would prefer that anyways, but. Right. <laughs> well, and and I'm not even joking about that. He literally did do business out of the basement of his parents' oh, house. There, there's video. There's video proof of that on the network on that ECW doc. So yeah. Ah, uh, yep. Uh, but his, the crew was like Taz, Stevie Richards, Tommy Dreamer, and Bubba Ray Dudley. I think is like they handled various things. And Bubba legitimately has like a degree in business or something like that. So oh, he, I did not know that. He says that on the documentary too. He said he has a background or degree in business. And so and said, okay. yet he stayed with ECW for so long. How about that? My point is he's brilliant and he got Velvet Sky somehow. So clearly he's not lying. Yeah, right. Yeah, uh, well, yeah, he's brilliant enough to secure her for at least yeah. a, you know, so a you few sh- years. So you shut your mouth. <laughs> well, I was gonna say Raven is also he passed the bar, he's a lo- you know, he could be a lawyer. So That's true. Yeah. Yet somehow he is Raven. Well, they explained that in WCW. Remember, he was a rich kid and he's hated his parents. Remember, you, yeah. you need to keep up, dude. That's uh, <laughs> I, hey, that's starting to uh, to you know look like something real. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but that wraps up the month of September. We're finally into the spooky month here of October, and there. That's right, folks. We're gonna scare you with this now. <laughs> Yeah, because the other stuff is so normal. I will say these are my favorite months of the year in our news. So I'll, I'll say that it's 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 heating up towards the end of the year. Some some stuff. If you are a regular regular listener. You know that what he just said is scary as hell. No pun intended. Let's go. Oh, oh hell yeah, man. <laughs> well, start off. <laughs> A week after a week <laughs> after being fired by WCW, Steve Austin appeared at an ECW house show and will be on ECW TV the coming week. He's still six weeks away from being recovered enough from his injury to wrestle. As soon as he's healthy, he will almost certainly be made ECW world champion as quickly as they can get the belt on him. <laughs> uh, Austin may be looking into working in all Japan pro wrestling, which would allow him to make a good living while still working in working in ECW. In his first promo, Austin mocked Hulk Hogan by calling himself the Stevester and said Steve Mania is running wa- uh, running wild, among other things. Uh, All right, it was funny. Those Hogan. were kind of funny. Yeah. Uh, Welcome to Monday Night Nyquil, where the big boys play with each other. Real promo, by the way. <laughs> yes. Oh, I'm getting to that. Oh, man. <laughs> didn't mean to step on you. Sorry, I didn't know we were coming to that, but yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, it's, yeah, oh, yeah. It's, it's coming down the pike, man. It's uh, well, m- Monday Night Nyquil, where the big boys play with themselves. <laughs> it's effing great stuff, man. Uh, we could, uh, you know, we could talk about, the, yeah, they're talking about the competition, blah, blah, blah. But Seriously, it was hilarious. The competition is uh, literally about to give them a check and fund them, so it, it's fine. Yeah, <laughs> right. Uh, in ECW, Cactus Jack has started a new gimmick where he's turning on the hardcore fans by wrestling boring scientific matches. 
he'd uh, he teased using weapons and then tells the fans that they don't deserve it before going back to doing headlocks. He wrote about this in so, his book, actually. I just want to mention he's trolling them by being a real wrestler. Doesn't that speak to ECW's audience and ECW style? Uh, a little bit, yeah. <laughs> People again wonder why I hate this company. Yeah. <sighs> This one made me laugh. So WWF contacted Tom Brandy, known as Johnny Gunn in ECW, about coming in, about coming in and doing a motorcycle cop gimmick designed like Eric Estrada on chips. You know, the show that ended in 1983. <laughs> because Vince McMahon is nothing if not timely when it comes to pop culture. <laughs> there Hashtag... was recently a thing. <sighs> Go ahead. Go for it. I was going to say, hashtag plans change. Brandy <laughs> actually becomes Sal Sincere. And then Tom Brandy. Uh, <sighs> there was a thing like recently, I don't know if you've been seeing on, on AEW, they always have like a rapper all the time now. It's always some kind of rapper. And they're always like from years and years ago. And someone said, man, no one's got their finger on the pulse of circa 19 or 2002, like AEW. Like, man, Vince has got his finger on the pulse of circa 1980. <laughs> yep. Uh, uh, what, is, what is it the kids are into these days? <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> oh, man. That's. that's <laughs> so it's not just one or the other. Nobody knows what's hip these days. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Well, hey, All Tony right. Khan doesn't exactly look like he knows what's hip. Okay. <laughs> doesn't look like he's ever known what was hip. Uh, you seen the way he dresses. He looks like he got stuffed into lockers by kids who also got stuffed into lockers. <laughs> he's the worst of them all. Right. Oh, man. So in ECW, they're planning to do a public enemy versus gangsters street fight that will actually take place in the street. On a trestle about a block from the arena. They uh, may, freaking course. They may even be setting up a ring there, but Uncle Dave isn't sure. Again, hashtag plans changed, and this did not end up happening. And we'll get into that. What? what sorry, what's the what's a, what's a trestle? I know I'm stupid. Uh, but... I don't know. I I, you're from like the city area. I figured you'd know better than I did. I don't know what the hell a trestle is. That's like a bridge. Yeah. Oh okay, my like god. A, like a bridge over the over water. They were going to have a, a four man street fight on that. Yeah. Oh, uh, good in God. Philadelphia, by the way, where, you know, the chances aren't totally high that you'll get shot. I know this is not as bad, but I also want to throw this out there. We're in October, right? Yeah. So I'm pretty, you'd be the expert oh, on God. this. Pretty sure there's yeah. snow and stuff, right? Uh, <laughs> it's, at, it's at least very cold. I'll say that. <laughs> Uh, I'm, Cal I'm in California. It's hot, it's hot all the time, but uh, yeah, well, there's a lot of stuff going on. <laughs> <laughs> Don't expect to see Sabu come back to ECW anytime soon, if ever. <laughs> uh, Sabu is working an NWA show for Dennis Carluzzo in New, in, uh, New Jersey in a few weeks, and it's the same night as an ECW show nearby. Paul Heyman is adamant that if Sabu works against them, they won't ever bring him back to ECW. As a side note, Sabu hasn't actually signed with WCW and is working there without a contract at the moment. I wonder how that's going to go. <laughs> also, real quick, one thing I never touched on. He owns his name, doesn't he? Say what? Sabu owns his name, right? I assume. I, I'm going to assume because he's literally used it everywhere. So, was, I'm just thinking about it. Just don't know. He's never not been Sabu. Sabu, yep. ever. Nope. Yeah. So he was smart enough to do that. Went. Right. Maybe he's uh, going to give credit for that. He's smart enough to do something, at least. So, I, <laughs> yeah, because... Smart I, enough to do that and uh, know that Super Blue is a plausible uh, substitution for stitches. So, you know, he's yeah, he's right. got a little bit of a brain. Yeah, right. <laughs> he used it for evil instead of good, but yeah. But... <laughs> Terry Funk plans to take the rest of the year off from wrestling and heal up some injuries. At the age of 51, he's talked about it possibly being time to finally hang up the boots and retire. Uh, that excuse, me while I laugh. excuse me while I laugh heartily. 
<laughs> yeah, right. ECW and AAA are both interested in using him, and he has a movie role lined up for early 1996, so it may be a while before he's back in the ring. I don't think he actually followed through with that movie in 96. I don't know what it is, but... Um, yeah, I can't find anything about it. I just want to point out that as of now, he did, in fact, retire before the Rolling Stones. Yeah, so, that's shocking. Yeah, well... I, you know, well, you know the old joke, man, or I don't even know what's a joke, where uh, Keith Richards wanted to adopt a tortoise, and when they told him it only lives for 100 years, he's like, see, that's a problem. You get these animals, you get attached, and then they die on you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you got to respect his outlook on life, dude. This next story, this is the one I was thinking about, that mother of God. Uh, I think we call and, her uh, Mary, don't we? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Mother Mary. <laughs> But this one is just like, wow. Uh, okay. Um, so drink a water here. Hold on. All right, hit me. Well, well none of this is going to surprise you, but it will make you laugh. Uh, so New Jack was involved in another incident at an ECW show this week. I'm sorry, at uh, an ECW show? Yes. Okay. Uh, during a match with the Dudley brothers, New Jack and dances with Dudley got into a little heat or got a little heated and began stiffing each other because, you know, of all people, uh, I'll, <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? I'll bet you that dances with Dudley called him the N word too. Good grief. After the match, a new Jack went, uh, went to the back first as Dudley was back. coming, <laughs> as Dudley was coming through new Jack was waiting behind the curtain and used a nightstick and hit him in the back of the head. You know, like a real man. I mean, Jake the Snake was going to do that to the Macho Man Elizabeth with a chair. <laughs> oh, but it was, he was going to blast him with a chair in the back? Yeah, he said he didn't care which one came through first, and the Undertaker stopped from turning face. Just reminds me of that. Wow. Uh, yeah, I forgot about all that. But, I mean, that was part of the angle. Not You said this was like, shoot, right? Yeah, uh, this this is was, uh, bad. Well, what, do you, what, what, what kind of weapon was it? It was a nightstick, which oh, know, so how that the was hell like, you secure one of those. Uh, nightsticks are us. Uh, well, of course. I don't, that was I don't a even shoot ask. nightstick, right? Yeah, I guess so. Uh, Dudley didn't go down, but his head was badly split open and needed a dozen <sighs> stitches. Dudley tackled New Jack <laughs> and a big fight broke out with New Jack standing with uh, or standing with his partner, Mustafa, and basically challenging the entire locker room to fight him. And telling people that he's sneaky and there's no telling what he'll do. Yeah, you just hit a man in the back of the head with a nightstick while he was walking through the curtain, you a-hole. Good lord. And I know he's dead, but seriously, he did this kind of crap all the time. Yeah, I mean, I'm sorry he's dead. I don't wish that on anybody, but he was not a good right. person. No. And I mean, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and trash on him. But if you're going to say this stuff about somebody when they're alive, they don't suddenly become a good person now that they're dead. Like, going underground doesn't necessarily make you awesome now. And again, that doesn't mean you need to sit there and crap on them. But, yeah, I don't man. believe in that. I believe uh, that's, that's wrong. But, yeah, you know, but I, I wouldn't call out. It's like, you know, that dead person, he was a real piece of crap. I mean, unless it's somebody like Hitler or Stalin or something like that, then, yeah, by all means, kick their yeah. corpse. But <laughs> I'm for that. Right. Uh, now, that's when you can piss, uh, you can piss on their grave. That's uh, one you should piss on the grave on. You can. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, either way, Taz got into New Jack's face, and in a normal situation, Taz has a reputation as a legit tough guy, but Taz is currently out with a serious neck injury and definitely shouldn't be fighting, so they were separated. New Jack later apologized to everyone for what happened, but most of the ECW locker room wants him gone. I wonder why when he just said, uh, you don't know what I'll do. I'm sneaky. Like, uh, are you going to shank me? But That's Paul the Heyman's... dorkiest thing you can say, by the way. I'm sneaky. Yeah. I mean, you say well, I'm a bad mofo or something. Like, that just sounds yeah, sneaky. right. Like, that just I'm makes you seem sneaky. Like a, that just makes you like seem my... like, a, a, like a big puss at that point. <laughs> I was going to say, my friend's eight, nine-year-old kid would say that and make more sense. I'm sneaky. I'm not a grown-ass yeah. man. <sighs> or uh, Rocky Romero, because he's the king of sneaky style. I guess that's true. Yeah. 
But Paul Heyman said that he didn't want to screw up the show the next night because the gangsters were in the main event. So New Jack hasn't been fired, at least not yet. Okay, well, there's your your problem right there. You booked the gangsters in the main event. Uh, don't and he's do the one that gets the public enemy? Uh, well, uh, actually, that is uh, our uh, coming up right here. Uh, so speaking of that main event, it's the show where Public Enemy and the Gangsters were supposed to have an actual street fight outside of the arena with the ring set up outside and everything. Ah, but you'll never guess what happens next here. Uh, so the weather. Well, not quite, but close. Mm-hmm. The the city wouldn't let them because they didn't have the necessary permits. And uh, there were complaints from people in the neighborhood about the match being advertised. <laughs> I can't imagine why. In Philly, though? They're just a Friday night. Right. Not that I want to see this crap, but really. You don't have like a dude just driving up and down the street with his, you know, blasting whatever crappy rap song and with his subwoofers. Like, come on now. They at least did my house? get some entertainment. <laughs> I, I did say, though, um, in my notes, I said, I can't understand why they were complaining about this. Uh, so at the show, Heyman had to explain the situation and tell the fans that the match couldn't be ha- or couldn't happen as advertised. Before the match, New Jack cut a promo saying that the WWF is afraid of them because they're run by a racist, making it clear that he was referring to Bill Watts and not Vince McMahon. Although I don't know why he figures that Bill Watts is running a damn thing. I, like, we have to also acknowledge that I don't think New Jack is wrong on this one. I mean, he's not running it, but calling Bill Watts a racist, he's not wrong on this one, right? This is uh, one you, you got to give him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as far as I know, I mean, there, there's, you know, tiptoeing around it by people like, you know, Jim Ross or whatever, but is good, buddy. Yeah. Yeah, right. Um, but come on, you're always going to defend your friends. Like someone comes at you and says, hey, you're short. I'm going to defend you. But even though you are, but. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I couldn't resist. Sorry. <laughs> good Lord. But yeah, so, I don't know. We, we could do we have a YouTube short about that. You guys can go check out. But. Anyway, he also trashed WCW and went in on Jim Cornette by calling him a bunch of very vulgar names. Uh, Uncle Dave says that since the gangsters might be getting fired from ECW any day now, it probably wasn't the best idea to burn bridges with every other promotion that might have ever considered giving them a regular (sighs) job. But then again, no one accused New Jack of being a rocket surgeon. (laughs) Yeah, I have to admire him. He just he hits everybody, everybody. He not went one, in hard. Two. Yeah. So it's, at least he's consistent and doesn't play favorites. So you got to uh, give him just, that. Yeah. Just burn it down. Salt the earth, man. <laughs> Literally what he effing does. Good God. At least he's an equal opportunity uh, crap talker, I guess. Well, opportunity dick. <laughs> right. Uh, but anyway, moving on from that. At the same ECW show, Conan wrestled Dudley Dudley. And the match was so bad that the crowd chanted, you both suck. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) That's a hell of a chant. Uh, After the match, Conan got on the mic and said, next time he comes to Philly, Paul Heyman better give him someone who knows how to wrestle. Uh, That got some heat backstage Uh, because most of the guys are friends with Dudley. I mean, Dudley Dudley. One of, one of the two original Dudley brothers. Uh, no, I know, but who? Uh, uh, just a dude. Uh, he, oh, okay. didn't, he, didn't, he didn't go on to do anything. Okay. I wonder why I, I didn't know who he was. Okay. Yeah. Because right. I know I most think, of them, but I've never heard this one. Neither one of them really went on to do anything. Uh, but, well, the one we did find out went on to be, like, I guess he was in a rock band or whatever the hell. So, I don't sure. know. Yeah, you, you actually looked it up on Wikipedia but I can't remember if it was, I think it was snot. If I remember correctly. Forgive me for blinking this crap out of my brain. Yeah, right. (laughs) Uh, But anyway, uh, speaking of the Dudleys, they introduced yet another Dudley this week. This one goes by the name Bubba Ray Dudley. So they they brought in all the white folks first, and then they introduced Devon to throw everybody off. (laughs) They're like, whoa, wait a second. <laughs> Do you remember when Edge and Christian were mocking them and they brought out like a uh, a black guy and a white woman as mom and pop Desley and like, oh, wow. Well, that explains it. Huh? 
Yeah, right. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> uh, I will still, I will never not love the explanation from to Tony Schiavone from uh, from Conrad Thompson, where he said, well, see, the gimmick is that Papa Dudley been out slinging that Peter Mead all over Dudleyville. <laughs> <laughs> so he's got all these different kids. <laughs> Black, like white, God. Native American, Latino, you name it. Oh, yeah. He's got them all. He liked them all. Sizes, all <laughs> yeah, all, all shades, all the colors of the all the colors of the rainbow. There you go. It so, wouldn't have been so bad if it wasn't stupid. You know? <laughs> right. And their defense, well, I don't know if this is defense, but it was supposed to be stupid. So. I guess. I guess yeah. that's true. But, you know. Hey, anything to promote harmony, okay? That's fine, whatever. But just like make it make sense. I, I've had friends who are uh, multi-race, and none of them are that dark. Okay? It's Devon, right? <laughs> oh yeah, he's he's <laughs> pushing Wesley Snipes shades. All right. All right. <laughs> oh uh, lord. But anyway, uh, several checks to ECW wrestlers bounced this week. <gasps> Perish the thought. Uh, Paul Heyman Hang said, on, that his... what? "Wait, what? I, I know. I, I was shocked too." Paul Heyman said that his what? car was. Sorry. <laughs> Paul Heyman said that his car was broken into, and his briefcase, which had his checkbook, was stolen, and he had to close the account. Oh well. Sure. Yeah. I'll buy that. <laughs> uh, Heyman has since contacted everyone and sent out new checks, which might as well have been made out of rubber because they're probably also going to bounce. <laughs> Uh, oh my gosh i i mean am i wrong with any of that well excuse me no, am i incorrect with any of this no and nor are you wrong but uh, <laughs> <laughs> i know you try to correct yourself there but trust me there's no need uh, yeah. <laughs> uh continuing on with this saga steve austin had a meeting scheduled with vince mcmahon about possibly coming to the wwf he also has a meeting with all japan if he ends up going to All Japan, he'll likely continue to work with ECW as well and will surely become their world champion as soon as he's healthy. If not, it's almost a certainty that he'll go to the WWF, WWF, can't speak, uh, because he'll pay, they'll pay more money and they're not in need of heels or they're, they are in need of heels that can work. That might work. I don't know. Let's see. Yeah, right. Uh, I'm interested to see how this pays off. Yeah, that's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see how this pays off for him. Uh, it's also worth speak- noting, by the way, he initially turned him down. They said they're going to call him Ice Dagger and put a green singlet on him. <laughs> yeah, I think it was after his. Uh, well, because Saint or uh, Pritchard said their original idea. They had the idea for this character called the Sandman for years. He was called the Sandman because he puts you to sleep, and he was that's literally like, Sandman. Yeah, it's funny that they wanted to go with the name the Sandman though, since like. <laughs> The Steve Austin character has been compared to the Sandman character, I think, mainly just because they're like supposed to be like the everyman and they drink beer. That's, That's literally where it ends. Kind of a stretch. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hey, Sandman claimed for years, oh, Austin stole my gimmick. It's like, oh, you're the only guy that can drink beer. My bad. <laughs> you also drink Bud Light. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, obviously the that the Sandman idea morphed into what the ringmaster became. So, but anyway, this one, I want to talk about life coming at you fast. The gangsters have been fired from ECW after the recent incident with new Jack and have reportedly tried to contact Jim Cornette about returning to smoky mountain. I bet that'll go over well. Uh, but given how many how- times have they left and came back to a company, dude? Right. Uh, but given the things that they've said about him, that's unlikely. Plus the fact that they walked out two months early on their damn deal. Like for Where's God's that? sake. Yeah, it's, hey, hey, Jim, uh, you think you got a spot for me down there? Thank you. Fuck you. Bye. Click. <laughs> uh. Taz did a, an interview talking about Lou Fez being his childhood hero growing up. And there's been a lot of talk about bringing Fez in to be in Taz's corner at ECW shows. Uncle Dave can just imagine what Fez's reaction would be to you know, what goes on at an ECW show. (laughs) (laughs) 
what <laughs> the hell was that? <laughs> uh, if anybody's ever seen Out of the Mouth of Madness <laughs> or In the Mouth of Madness, that was, uh, yeah, <laughs> that was just scream. But I can imagine that would be his reaction as he runs out the door. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway uh speaking of taz his neck is still badly injured and he can't do suplexes which is basically his entire move set so he's been using a chokehold as a finisher and that would never catch on oh hell no yeah <laughs> uh, getting back to this guy though keeping on with this saga and this is going to go on pretty much till the end of the year steve austin cut another great promo on ecw this week running down WCW and talking about how he was unceremoniously fired. The problem is Austin has a second meeting with WWF scheduled this week and is likely going to end up going there. So all this great work that Austin is doing in ECW likely won't end up going anywhere in the long term. Uh, no, but it's, I, it's it, great archival footage. How dare you say it isn't going where? Yeah, right. Well, I, it, I will say this. I think it helped him find himself. It was like when, I mean, today, uh, WWE people will sometimes go back to, you know, uh, the performance center or something like that because they want to, you know, test something out or whatever. So, yeah. As there you of go. this recording, by the way, the New Day is facing pretty deadly at uh, the next thing see pay-per-view. So yeah. There you I, go. <laughs> I heard freaking Xavier Woods talking about like uh, Ace Ventura coming out of the backside of a rhino, we stay wet. <laughs> like, like, what <laughs> the F is that? Yeah. Uh, AAA held a show in Chicago and drew 3,500 people and made about $80,000 at the gate. But due to the high cost of bringing in wrestlers and advertising, the show was still a money loser. Several ECW wrestlers worked <laughs> the show as well. <laughs> I, yeah, you gotta, no. Wait, you got to pay for the building? I, the nerve of these people. That's for uh, this year, by the way, Jerry Jones just giving Missing Man the building for free. Effing nuts. <laughs> Several ECW wrestlers work the show as well, and there's some sort of deal in place for ECW to be able to show footage of this event on their TV show. But the ECW guys didn't get over very well because it was a mostly Hispanic audience, and American style wrestling just never really seems to click with Lucha audiences. Ah, that's true to an extent. Like, nowadays, it's kind of a, a I don't know, a, like a crapshoot, but I don't know. This it depends on the fan, too, though, to be fair. Right. <laughs> this one, uh, to wrap up October, an ECW show ended in panic due to an angle going awry. Well, I'm sure that's not the first time. <sighs> wow. But wouldn't be the last. But uh, McFoley wrote about this in his book as well. Cactus Jack accidentally set Terry Funk on fire. <laughs> this is that, okay. Yeah, and the fire <sighs> spread into the crowd with a fan getting burned as well as the ring catching on fire. Oh, my <sighs> God. Then the lights went out as part of a planned angle with Raven and Dreamer, so it was dark and there was fire. <laughs> God dang it. Uh, then someone started spraying the fire extinguishers. Needless to say, the crowd panicked a bit, and a lot of fans were choking and coughing from the fire extinguishers. This is the most not surprising ECW thing I've ever heard. F me. I just like, God. And this is between two, like, legit legends from, like, other companies, too. So several people were banged up, and one or two of the fans were reportedly hospitalized. One fan had burns on his hand, and Terry Funk suffered second-degree burns on his arm and back. Many fans were furious, saying that turning out the lights uh, while there was still fire burning everywhere put people in danger, you don't say. Well, well and, thanks for yeah. saying the obvious. <laughs> and a lot of people have been vowing to never attend another ECW show. Oh, their presence will be missed. Those, two, uh, two, those 28 people are going to be missed. I know. Uh, Funk was furious and completely destroyed the dressing room after, but later apologized and even asked to wrestle on the next show because he wants to help make sure that ECW can get those fans back that vowed not to attend. Paul Heyman has been telling people after the show that ECW will no longer use fire as a prop. Whoa! 
anyway, this ends up becoming a big story in the next few weeks, and we will get to it. I want to point out real quick, I heard on an old interview with Jake the Snake, and he said that Vince McMahon told him flat out, that snake ever gets in the crowd, do not ever call me again, do not come back. That's a snake. Yeah. Even though okay. he gave him the damn snake. Yeah, right. I like that. I just it's just funny to me though. It's like, well, we're gonna try to get everyone back with that. But like Vince Man Flout says, you do that, you're fired. But Paul Heyman's gonna keep them around. Okay. Yep. Uh you almost set half the crowd on fire, but you know what? Water under the bridge, man. All I heard was, you know, half the crowd was safe. Exactly. <laughs> hey, you know what? Always looking at the, the, the glass half full. Or in this case, the half of the audience not set on fire. Hey, right. Good for you. Half of them didn't almost die, so leave them alone. Yeah, right. Uh, man. God. We're going to take a break right here. We're diving in head first right after this break. Follow the main event marks at facebook.com forward slash main event marks pod on Twitter at main event underscore marks and on Instagram both at main event underscore marks and at main event collector. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. My name is Thomas, and what's your name? Uh, I'm Alan. Alan. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. We're brothers. That's right. Yeah. yeah the that. mother, same mother and father. Your room was... Oh, we shared a room. Shared a room. We right. shared a room. I thought I knew your face. Yeah, we go maybe. way back, mate. Yeah. yeah. We should do a podcast then. Uh, we have. We do, we do a podcast. We do a podcast. What's it called? The... Broadcast. Broadcast. Yeah, that was planned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well. What do we do? Well, we cover all different things in the world of pop culture. We're talking about comic books, we're talking about professional wrestling, and we're talking about movies. Go back and watch classic retro wrestling events, the likes of WWE, WCW, and if you do like that, you can check us out on Apple iTunes, also on Podbean, Anchor, and on Podknife. Also check us out on Twitter, at The Broadcast. That's B-R-O. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Ending. Yeah, it's all right. Good on you. Yeah. Instagram also at the Broadcast Podcast. Remember, we don't spell it with a C. We spell it with a K. So, you might. Take it easy. The main event marks are available wherever you get podcasts and on YouTube. Find all of our links on our link tree at linktr.ee forward slash main event marks. And we're back. We're back. So rolling into November here, there's a lot of talk about bringing in Missy Hyatt to ECW to work mixed tag team matches with Bill Alfonso against Todd Gordon and Beulah. Yeah, but this those checks are just gonna write themselves. Uh, well, what the fuck? <laughs> like, <laughs> there's another that... one you can play too. Oh well, uh, I I believe you're talking about this one, sir. Here is a check with my name on it. Write down any number on this piece of paper, and I will pay it. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be the one. Uh, <laughs> shut up and take my money. Oh, that one too. <laughs> all of them. <laughs> yeah, just just hit it. Just hit him with uh, hit him with all of it, man. Keep it on with this saga here. Steve Austin will be sticking around ECW for a little while and won't be headed to the WWF anytime soon. Hashtag plans change. He debuts for the WWF two months after this, and is given a title. Yeah. Uh. I, yep. Oh, yeah, that's I, I, I had to sit and think. I was like, wait, what? It's like, oh, yeah, the billion dollar belt. I forgot about that. He didn't go and to was, the moon with it, though, but. Mother of God. Uh, Shut your mouth. Cameron Grimes rules. Uh, and <laughs> keeping up with this one. Sabu worked for uh, worked in the WA show the same night as a nearby ECW show facing Devin Storm, later known in WCW's oh, yeah. Crowbar. <laughs> In a match that many people said was the best they'd ever seen live. That's like seven now? Were the, Between last were week these, and this week? <laughs> were these people infants? Or I've never seen a wrestling sh- or never seen a wrestling match in life? One of the two? Even that even then, I mean it would be by default, I guess. A Sabu I, don't, I don't think I'd ever say crowbar best anything. Yeah. But, best at who the F are you? Uh, Sabu and Paul Heyman had a long conversation the night before, with Heyman presumably trying to talk him out of working the show. Heyman also 
uh, has gone on record saying that uh, if Sabu did the show, he would never be welcomed back to ECW. So that's where that stands. Oh, God. Yeah, we're sure he won't be. Yeah. Uh, well, I, that's not going to completely change in like a week. <sighs> Good grief. Now, we got a couple of we got a couple of uh, ongoing threads keeping up here. Here's another one. Pennsylvania State Athletic Commission has scheduled a meeting regarding the recent ECW show after all the complaints of the fire spot getting out of control. <laughs> uh, not a moment too soon, eh? Uh, real quick, I just want to point out, people give Vince McMahon crap for the sports entertainment thing. Here you go. Yeah, well, the commission hasn't really been regulating wrestling for many years in the state. Oh, no. That's, that's just a lie. Say. <laughs> uh, but they can still crack down on it if they want to. They banned blading a few years ago, but they don't enforce the rule, and everyone, especially ECW, still does it. As for what happened at the show, the word is that it was a towel drenched in lighter fluid that was on the chair, and the fire flew off the chair and landed in the crowd, causing a decent-sized fire and burning some fans. Oh, my God. As they were trying to spray it with the fire extinguishers and put it out, fans uh, started choking out on the fumes, and at that moment, the lights in the building went off because they were doing an angle with Raven and Tommy Dreamer. And guess what? This angle was that Raven crucified Tommy Dreamer, so it turns out the famous Sandman crucifixion wasn't the first time it happened. This must not be on film anymore. I've never heard of this or seen it. Me, Yeah, me neither. This must have been untelevised. Uh, you got to play the hits, right? Everybody, you know, fondly remembers the crucifixion of Christ. So let's mock it with this garbage <sighs> company. This has nearly oh, nothing to do with anything, but it's, it's just ironic to me that... Uh, a Jewish guy did this. Yeah, I know. Uh, that might make it worse. I guess it depends on your like point that. of view, but yes. Yeah, yeah. right. Uh, so with the lights off, a fire burning in the crowd, and no one uh, able to see or breathe from the fire extinguisher fumes, people naturally panicked. <laughs> you, you think? Okay, I, I just want to have me... I know I'm asking just I guess too much here, but why the hell... Would you turn off the lights if there's a fire going on? Because they're stupid. I don't know. That's that's literally the only ex explanation I can give. I don't I don't know what else to say. But yeah, getting away from that though, uh, Conan has been running his own weekly shows at an arena in Tijuana and is doing them like uh, ECW shows, trying to turn the arena into a Mexican version of the ECW arena. So Why? how do you make this more of a dump? And I'm not talking about the people, so don't get, don't think I'm getting racist with it. I'm just talking about I've heard Tijuana is not exactly the cleanest of places. So kind of like the Philadelphia of Mexico. Wow. Now that's going to ruffle some feathers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I mean, maybe. Except uh, there's more of a party life in Tijuana, I guess. And they have a beach. So there's that. Uh, Son of a beach. Anyway. But uh, many of the angles are directly lifted from ECW, and they even got the fans to start chanting Triple A, Triple A. All right. Uh, after big angles and matches. They've started using tables and things like that. Also, Pero Aguayo Jr., who was severely injured last week and was also or it was supposed to miss a month of action, was already back in the ring after only se seven days and did a blade job during a match. Keep in mind, he's 16. <sighs> Is 16 legal age in Mexico? I guess it's legal because uh, young people wrestle all the time down there. I mean, like I said, I think race started when he was uh, 14. Uh, I think TJ Perkins as well started when he was 14 down in Mexico. I know 16 is the age over in uh, England, right? Uh, I think. I don't remember. I think Marty Skrull told me that. Oh, good Lord. But uh, just to wrap that up, Perro Aguayo Jr. passed away a few years back from mounting injuries that just finally caught up with him. And you wonder why after reading something like this. Yeah, man. Maybe step out of the ring and go to a doctor. 
and not I just get doctor. some super glue. Okay. Not, and not a doctor who starts your visit by going, hi, everybody. That's where Soraya went. <laughs> Good Lord. Getting back to ECW, though, uh, ECW tag team Public Enemy had a meeting with Vince McMahon recently. No deal has been signed yet, but it's believed that both sides were happy with the meeting, and it's now a question of when rather than if. To Four which years. I say, to which I say... <laughs> uh, <laughs> Well, I mean, actually, four, they would be there in four years, to be fair. So, yeah, but that's not where they're hopping to. <laughs> uh, Paul Heyman actually set up the meeting because WWF has told Heyman that they don't want to hurt ECW or go behind his back. Public Enemy will likely finish up with ECW in January and probably be headed to the WWF after that. Uncle Dave says that none of the things that Public Enemy has done in ECW to get over will be allowed in the WWF or in WCW. <laughs> Well, some of the stuff would was allowed in bit, WCW, you know. but yeah. To me, to me, watching as a as a fan watching it, they were the first team or anybody to ever use like tables during matches and stuff. So, like you know, I'm not saying it was exactly groundbreaking, but at the time, me watching it, that was the first time I had seen it. At least on Nitro, yeah. I should say. Uh, right. Yeah. Well, Public Enemy, like. Paul Heyman should get literally 100% of the credit for, for Public Enemy. I mean, yeah, they had to go out there and do that stuff. But he booked them in a way to make them seem important. Outside of the little bubble that was ECW, nobody cared. They sucked. <sighs> Good Lord. It's just, it's, you have to, you have to be honest with yourself and admit that. They didn't well, exactly you know, set a, anything on fire. I'm an Oakland Ace fan, dude. Trust me. I know how to do that. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> Well, yeah, because, I mean, they somewhat got over in WCW. I can't say that they didn't do anything there. Uh, they were at least put in they were on, angles and whatever. They were on TV, like, every week. Every week. And those people yeah, were standing I, and waving their hands when their music came on and stuff, okay? As a little so kid, I, I thought they were cool. Let me just say anything and everything we want about them. But I will never say they weren't over. Right. Ever. I mean, they didn't have great matches or get over to the point of where, you know, they were like the top team or anything like that. But they, I mean, it's like Disco Inferno. And oh, I think he I could wrestle. Think he was a little good, though, wrestling. So. Yeah, well, that's what I was going to say. He was an actual good wrestler, though. So, oh, man. But anyway, uh, Steve Austin was the most talked about wrestler on TV this week in ECW. He took over the Beulah's Box segment. The real thing. Is it called? Uh, wearing Beulah's box. That's what I thought you said. Okay. Yeah, I'm like, uh, go ahead. Just, well, I'm gonna keep it PG and give you less editing. Go ahead. Just keep going. Yeah, that's, uh, I mean, yeah, take take from that what you will. But anyway, this is where he wore a black wig, impersonating Eric Bischoff, and talked about Monday Night Will, where the big boys play with each other. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Austin got Austin got in tons of funny lines at WCW's expense. He also called woman a quote five dollar piece of ass, and said she married a midget, Kevin Sullivan. Good oh, lord! <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's kind of funny. Uh, as you can imagine, several people in WCW weren't thrilled about this. Ah, who gives a damn? I thought they didn't care. We're watching. Why do they care? Oh, Kevin Sullivan was clearly watching. Eric if Bischoff we're talking like a personally offended, okay, I get that, but I'm talking about WCW as a whole. Give us a damn. Yeah, right. Well, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> like, uh, also, yeah, Bischoff died out here, Jet Black, dude. Like, he he brought that on himself. So. Yeah, right. <laughs> Uh, a confidential hearing was held by the Pennsylvania State Athletic Commission regarding the fire incident at last month's CCW show. Officially, lawyers and the attorney general are reviewing the case and to decide what, if any, punishment is appropriate. From sources Uncle Dave <sighs> spoke with, Paul Heyman was told in no uncertain terms that if anything like that ever happens again, they will shut down ECW. So it looks shut like that place down. No exceptions. Hell yeah. <laughs> So it looks like they're probably escaping with a slap on the wrist and a don't let it happen again. 
I mean, that's Pennsylvania for you. Is it really? Uh, dude, Pennsylvania is such a crap hole. I'm sorry if we have any listeners from there, but it just, I, I have no faith in anything from that state ever. Wow. I mean, there's a reason people talk about how shady Philadelphia has been for like ever. It's not, it, it is not exactly a secret. Yeah. But anyway. And I I'm think they currently hold the, uh, they currently have the uh, front runner for the NFL MVP. So there's that. <laughs> yeah. So there's a good chance that several of ECW's top stars are leaving soon. <laughs> you don't say. Uh, Public Enemy has top stars. Met, <laughs> they've recently met with uh, WWF, but WCW has offered them a six month contract. And they're currently leaning towards WCW because it's less time on the road for more money. And there's more teams to work with. WWF does a better job of getting over new stars, however. Uh, WCW wants to rename the team. Hold on for this. The Mac Daddies. But keep the same gimmick. (laughs) What the f***? (laughs) Never heard this in my life. Uh, I mean, until I started doing the notes, obviously. I've heard it. Okay, now, I'm I'm not even remotely trying to make an excuse. But I've often wondered how they got away with using that name when I felt like the Public Enemy rap group might have had it trademarked. Right. Uh, well, <laughs> the WWF wants to rename them Assault and Battery. <laughs> well, I, the shoe fits. <laughs> I, I, right. <laughs> Sounds more like the gangsters, but no, whatever. <laughs> Assault and Battery. Did you ever watch that old show Step by Step? Uh, Yeah. There was, a, there was an episode where they were trying to win Super Bowl tickets and they had the last two minutes or three minutes in the ring with two big women wrestlers and their names were Assault and Battery. <laughs> Good Lord. <laughs> it's like low-hanging fruit. I mean, that's, that's kind of, I mean, it's an old school, like, old school wrestling type name, but I think it sounds cool. Not for the public Assault enemy, but, you know. and Battery. <sighs> Like, I, uh, like, like, your first thing, you got to do the ear test, okay? It's 1995, so it's Howard Finkel. Can you imagine Howard Finkel saying, Assault and later. battery. <laughs> no, I'm kind of pissed we never heard it. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, yeah, the public enemy. Like, ugh, man, all of it sounds like trash. <laughs> anyway, uh, so... ECW will also be uh, certainly be losing woman who's headed to WCW soon when her husband, Kevin Sullivan, is the booker. She may be replacing Sherry Martell as Harlem Heat's manager, since Sherry may be getting phased out of the company soon. I don't think that happens. Uh, it, they, uh, no, she goes with Harlem Heat for a little while longer. Yeah. Uh, and then when she leaves, doesn't isn't it Colonel Robert Parker that takes over? They kind of mix them together a little bit. Okay. And then, I remember. and then they have no manager. It would have been because kind of funny. She's she's one. definitely in that the infamous Booker T promo. I'm not gonna say it, but the infamous right. one. Uh now in the archives, I believe. Free yeah. Stampede ninety seven. Yes. So it's free yeah. stampede ninety seven. She's definitely with Harlem Heat. So no. So plans change in that, pal. Yeah, right. Uh it would have been kind of funny because that would have been the second black tag team woman would have managed. In WCW, by the way. I forgot about Doom. Yeah. Uh, But WCW is also interested in Conan, who has dabbled in ECW and is, of course, a top star in AAA. Well, they need him for that Dungeon of Doom, dude. (laughs) Yeah, he's Dungeon of Doom for life, Vato. There you go. Well, for a couple of months until the NWO wants him. Well, whatever. Semantics. (laughs) Cactus Jack also recently had a meeting with the WWF. In the past, they would have never been interested in someone who looks like him, but times change. Paul Heyman has told WWF that he wants to keep Cactus until the end of April or so to finish out his current storyline, and WWF is in no hurry to take him. The WWF has taken a friendly approach with ECW and is looking uh, at it as a place where they can send their guys to work since WWF isn't running as many house shows. Cactus is is, uh, good friends with Dean Douglas, And it's well known that Douglas is currently unhappy with his position in the WWF, so that may play a role in his decision. It does not. I can't remember. When does Mankind pop up? The night after WrestleMania 12. 
which is the next okay. year in April. So they got that one right. Yeah, so they, yeah, so there you go. And I uh, and, feel like I remember hearing Joey Styles in like a sound bit saying, "This is Mick Foley or Cactus Jack's last match before he becomes Mankind in the WWF." I feel like that's a thing. <laughs> I remember hearing, hearing that. I know for a fact that Jim Ross pulled really hard for Mick Foley because he knew him from WCW. And he was like, oh, it'd be great. And he said he kept bugging Vince over and over. Vince kept shooting him down. No, I don't want him. I don't want him. I, you know, he's, he doesn't belong here. And then finally, Ross said this. This sticks with him to this day. He said Vince told him, I will let you sign him because I want you to know what it's like to get your heart broken by a talent. Oh. Because in Vince's mind, Foley was a surefire flop failure. And It's hard and- to argue with his logic. I mean, obviously, revisionist history is like, hey, you're an idiot for that. But I don't know. I don't, I'm not going to take one look at Cactus Jacks. That's a star. Right. But, but I didn't realize, did do... but no one realized how brilliant Mick Foley is, right? <laughs> right. I mean, he got way more mileage out of Mick Foley than anybody else would have. But even his, his stuff in WCW was fairly entertaining. Sure. It was, I mean, he did. Oh, I'm not saying it was bad too, in, any, but... in any way. I'm just, I, I can see what Vince was seeing. Right. He did say, though, he did not want Cactus Jack, and he had no interest in Cactus Jack, so he had to change the gimmick. But then he let him break. At the end of the day, was bri- which at the end of the day was brilliant too. Oh yeah, because people. I mean, he, I like Cactus Jack, but uh, oh, he's definitely my favorite of the, all the Foley's. Yeah, but I don't. I I was always partial to Mankind. It was always my favorite, just because it was like it was so weird, and yeah. I don't know. I like the duality of like he came out to that. That uh, really somber orchestral music, whatever, and then he leaves to like happy angelic music. Yeah, right. Like that was that was that was original. highly original too. Yeah, Foley said he came up with all of that because he said he really. That's why they call it Ode to Freud because you know it's like a duality of man and all that stuff. But uh, thank God they changed the name from Manson the Mutilator. <laughs> that was <laughs> something. Keep up, uh, keeping up with this, though, we did cover this in a previous episode. Public Enemy worked a dark match at WWF Survivor Series, losing to the Smoking Guns. But word is that they're still leaning towards signing with WCW. And, of course, Paul Heyman is trying to keep them in ECW. Yeah, they went south. Uh, and then... They actually got a paycheck that didn't bounce, too. So that probably... I know. How about gave that? Them a little, gave them a little stiffy. <laughs> <laughs> right. ECW November to Remember took place. Sabu made a surprise and return. And I didn't. <laughs> right. Uh, made a surprise return to ECW and had a falling out with NWA over it. The Blue Meanie debuted with Stevie Richards. And I'm not going to go back through that because we honestly covered this a few weeks ago. Uh, if you go to our uh, World War Three episode now in the archives. Or, excuse <laughs> me. W- WCW World War Three 1995 episode. We have the falling out of the NWA? Uh, Sabu. Oh, okay. You remember that whole thing about uh, just to sum up real quick. He booked himself on an NWA show earlier in the day, showed up at ECW that night, and Dennis yeah. Corluzo got pissed because he's like, well, he was supposed to stick around. You and I had a great laugh about the fact that they thought they were going to pop some some business by booking him against Devin Storm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, that's a notable name in 95. Uh, not that it's a notable oh, name now. But. Notable name ever. <laughs> right. Uh, also at November to remember, Steve Austin wrestled his first match, surprisingly putting over ECW champion Mikey Whipwreck clean. Uh, Austin looked rusty. That is a real good. sentence. <laughs> Think about it. That's the guy whose move he'd end up stealing, too. <laughs> uh, if people don't know, it was the Whippersnapper. And then Austin ended up doing it, obviously, with Stone Cold Stunner, but... Uh, Austin looked rusty, but was still good. God. Um, uh, does Owens just call it the stunner? Yeah. Yeah. The difference Sabu, there, though, is he got permission to use it. Yeah, right. Sabu worked his ass off in the first match back, flipping and crashing through everything. You know, typical Sabu. Cactus Jack this is where I, this is a callback to earlier in the podcast. Uh, Cactus Jack wore two different shirts. One of them was a WCW Dungeon of Doom shirt. (laughs) 
That place, uh, I get it. Okay. A fifth. And and the other was a shirt with a picture of Eric Bischoff that said, Forgive me, Uncle Eric, on the back. Oh, for fuck's sake. And yeah. He, <laughs> Uh, he talked about that. He said he had these personally airbrushed for the show. Like he custom made these shirts. Uh, he wrote about all this in his, his first book. Have a nice day. But Terry Funk teased retirement at the end of the show and basically passed the torch of King of Hardcore over to Tommy Dreamer. Also, Shane Douglas was backstage. Uh, I like Shane how Douglas. every single month Shane Douglas, uh, New Jack, Public Enemy are a thing. Yep. Almost like are these are the leaving? damn nucleuses of this horrible company. Yep. Are they leaving? Are they staying? Where are they going? Are they back? You know, what's going on? Is fan getting beat up? <laughs> uh, to wrap up November, a woman has denied reports that she's leaving ECW. Meanwhile, uh, Conan worked his last ECW show and is reportedly headed to WCW. Uh, Conan is still going to help Paul Heyman book AAA stars, though. You know, because you need Conan for that. I don't know if you're joking, but I believe Paul Heyman said he did. So, yeah, I guess, you know, to get through the uh, get around the, the language barrier and whatever, I guess I you know, can understand that. Plus, they probably trusted Conan. You know, they don't know who the hell Paul Heyman is. But either way, I don't think they uh, want to know who the hell he is. <laughs> that brings us to December, and that will be wrapping up the year here. So let's get into it. Let's hook oh, them up. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, ECW will almost surely try to test the waters of running a pay-per-view sometime in 1996. Hashtag plans changed. Uh, meanwhile, the WWF is raising the price of its in-your-house pay-per-views. The original idea was that those pay-per-views were cheaper and hopefully lead to more buys, and it didn't work out, as buy rates are lower than ever. Meanwhile, WCW pay-per-views are <sighs> double the price and are drawing better. So the WWF is abandoning the idea of cheap pay-per-views. Okay, well, I'm not a business major here, but why would you... Oh, it's not working. People aren't buying it. Raise the price. <laughs> uh, I guess their thought is they're like, well, people are going to buy it, whether, you know, whatever the price is. So, And in their defense, that panned out. I don't know. But I will say about this... You want to know why nobody was buying these pay-per-views? Go back and watch the In Your House from December of 1995. Just just do it. Go back and watch that and tell me why people were not ordering this garbage. They had a hog about? pen match. That's exactly what I was going to say. What are you talking about? A hog pen match is on there. Yeah, where Hunter Hearst Helmsley took on hog Henry O. Godwin. Oh, man. I just... Well, uh, you know, I gotta, I gotta hit you with this again. Shut up and take my money. <laughs> <laughs> Good grief! But see, here you go, keeping up with it. Steve Austin is said to be strongly considering going to All Japan, which would allow him to also still work in ECW between tours. However, the WWF is still very interested in him, in him as well. Yeah, I wonder where that's gonna go. Nowhere. So he sucks. Can't draw a dime. Oh, cracked a thousand beer cans, never drew a dime. They never drew a dime. <laughs> I love that you have that on the ready. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Hell yes. Those guys never drew a dime. <laughs> it's true. There you go. Uh, so, Terry Funk is filming a part in a Bruce Willis movie in January. I had no idea what this movie was. I can't find any information about it. So I'm wondering if he got cut. Six cents? <laughs> yeah, he's he's like, I swear I'm not dead. I just look like it. But my horse is sick and might be. <laughs> uh, I see old people. So various states, this, this story is just mind-blowing. Various states are trying wow. to ban. I got the new for this spot. <laughs> Various states are trying to ban UFC and other MMA companies, and it's all really interesting, but not really wrestling related until the end. A Connecticut legislature involved or legislator, excuse me, involved in trying to get UFC banned in the state also says that due to existing laws, he doesn't believe ECW style of wrestling is permitted in the state, citing its violent reputation. 
Obviously, this is ridiculous, but Paul Heyman has been forced to respond, clarifying that ECW is pro wrestling and not UFC, <laughs> that more people get hurt in uh, boxing matches than in UFC or than in ECW. I'm sure that's true because you're legit- legitimately wailing on other people's faces and organs. But the whole thing came about because there was a some confusion about a new UFC copycat promotion starting up that ran their first show in the Northeast called Extreme Fighting Championships with some lawyers or lawmakers confusing it with ECW. Yeah, I uh, see that. We did a, a WTUF moment of the week on that, actually. It is in the archives. I forget which show we talked about it on. They held like a secret show in the middle of nowhere and didn't even tell the bus driver. They're just like, keep driving. And we'll tell you when to stop. <laughs> they ended up doing it at the, at the uh, Carol Co. Uh, movie lot or whatever and gave out tickets for free. The people they were giving the tickets to didn't even know what the hell it was until they showed up. <laughs> yeah, because, yeah, you know, you should always do that. Here's a ticket to what? F you. That's what. Just show up. <laughs> and what? Possibly die. Yeah, right. Uh, it's a ticket to uh, an early grave. Here you go. The Heavenly Bodies debuted in ECW. The WWF wasn't an option for them because Jimmy Del Rey of the Bodies was involved in a mysterious legal case that currently has Tatanka suspended. So until that case is cleared up, WWF isn't interested. I think we talked about this. We did. Uh, <laughs> According to Kevin Nash, I was going to say Kevin Nash. Other, I feel like that was the name. Yes. Okay. Yeah. He said he saw the woman. There, there was a woman in the lobby of the hotel they were staying at uh, and talking to police. She had like half of her head shaved. She was crying, had blood on her, whatever. Uh, apparently, uh, I'll say this now um, for, for legal reasons. Allegedly. Jimmy Del Rey. <laughs> uh, Jimmy Del Rey assaulted her. And somehow Tatanka was like nearby, so he got dragged into it. But he was cleared of all charges and let go, and I think it all fell on Jimmy. I heard Jimmy wasn't a good person. I know he's passed away, but I, I'm, and I don't know. I, I I really don't know. That's just what I've heard. And by somebody called Gigolo Jimmy, I mean I I don't know. I'm blown away by by the thought of that. <sighs> yeah. But, yeah. Um. He wouldn't ever be back in WWE, I don't think. Tatanka would be gone. Uh, yeah. yeah. So I, I'll say this now. I'm not reading through his entire Wikipedia page, so I don't effing know. Uh, I, if, but I want to say, though, Jimmy Graffiti is after this, so he would get a job somewhere. Wait, 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 wait. He, J, uh, Jimmy Graffiti is, J, is Jimmy Del Rey? Yeah. I'm today's years old. I had no yeah. idea. I thought you were being a smart ass. <laughs> no, that's really him. <laughs> yeah. Okay. In October of 1996, World Class or World Championship Wrestling, uh, or Del Rey joined it. World Championship Wrestling is Jimmy Graffiti. Yeah. Well, I'll, well, I'll be damned. Uh, okay. If you guys have never seen a Jimmy Graffiti match, man, YouTube that crap. You're yeah. welcome. <laughs> There's your advice for the day. We love you or hate you, whatever. Or hate you, whatever. (laughs) (laughs) There you go. Uh, Bruce Pritchard was backstage at a recent ECW show. Bubba Ray Dudley got the best crowd reaction of anyone on the show, and Cactus Jack did another incredible promo, this time in a suit and tie with his hair slicked back and doing a puppet ventriloquist bit. Oh, good grief. What the hell? (laughs) I'm today's years old and heard that. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, I, I can't even imagine the reaction of Bruce Pritchard backstage in ECW. It's like, <laughs> it's like, ugh, get me a moist towelette. <laughs> uh, it's considered pretty much a guarantee that Public Enemy is going to double ECW, and their final ECW match will take place next month. Yeah. Well, lottie, lottie, dottie, we likes to party. And uh, following up on that. Uh, Keeping with that, the Public Enemy's final show for ECW before they leave for WCW will be on January 5th, and they plan to have a house party in the building after the show. WCW was... (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, uh, well, I'll leave that open for uh, uh, ridicule and laughter. 
But WCW was originally going to have them be called the Mac Daddies, but now they're negotiating with Def Jam, the record company that owns the rights to the name Public Enemy because of the rap group. Okay, and, I, I was unsure of that. Okay. Yep, there you go. And I, I didn't want to... I didn't want to burn the lead there, so I, I figured I'd, I'd hit you with it later on in the, in the podcast. But uh, they'll likely still keep the and use the same name, and they did until until the end. Man, they were. Oh, well, they died. Yeah, they did. Yep. So there was a lot of controversy regarding woman, aka Nancy Sullivan, on the WCW Hotline, and I'll give you three guesses to uh, about uh, who it involves on the WCW Hotline. <laughs> Uh, it can only be one guy. Mark Madden reported that woman will be oh, leaving. Oh, the Steelers. Sorry. Uh, I said that. <laughs> I'm, I'm right with you. I got to do that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, Mark Madden reported that woman will be leaving ECW and coming to WCW and using the name Elizabeth and acting like Randy Savage's new manager. Yeah. Yeah, doesn't happen. Where, where does this crap come from? Uh, his ass? I don't know. Uh, look, I can't totally crap on him for that just because of what, what I'm about to say. But uh, so both Woman and Kevin Sullivan have vehemently denied it. And WCW actually erased that message from the hotline. There's rumors now that Madden's WCW future is in question over it. Kevin Sullivan reported. Yeah, no, it's uh, not. Report, <laughs> Kevin Sullivan reportedly wants him fired. Uncle Dave says that he can confirm that WCW actually had been discussing doing exactly that. So Madden wasn't lying about the idea, but as to whether it will actually happen or not, Uncle Dave suspects it won't. Oh, well, when you know who won the pony, uh, at least not anytime soon, since both woman and Sullivan were so adamant in denying that she's leaving ECW. I mean, she okay. does. I don't know when. I'm going to do a quick breakdown of this. So, Uncle Dave says she's coming in to be Elizabeth. Yeah. Mark Men reports this. Yep. And then, then they say it was, in fact, being talked about. Oh, uh, well, Uncle Dave says that. I, I, I don't know. You know, take that just, for what you will. Like, like who's, who's at fault here? I think you're yeah. both asses, but... Right. <laughs> Well, it's actually going to happen. Or it, it, it was talked about, so it was a well, rumor. It's like, the thing, it comes down to the, the hotline. Like, why are you talking about your WCW hotline if you're not sure of it and you're in the damn company? Meltzer pulling stuff out of his ass is nothing new, so that's whatever. This well, is the uh, one that's stupid to me. The guy is under contract with him. Well, the thing is, like, he's not going to get fired because, like, Eric Bischoff said, this is the kind of crap he hired him for, is to stir the crap. So uh, that's what he's doing, I guess. No, he is a piece of crap. But... <laughs> yeah, that's not totally wrong. But here we go. Keep it on with this one. Like I said, it's like it's been going on since the summer, dude. Steve Austin is almost certainly going to WWF soon. <laughs> Sorry, I thought you were going to start with ECW fans saw one of the best shows they've ever saw. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> not this time, oddly enough. I think we're done with those finally, but... It's just like every other week. Uh, Steve Austin's <laughs> leaving soon. Oh, he's definitely going. He had talks with. Like, shut up. <laughs> but uh, he worked the recent ECW show with a newly shaved head, almost a crew cut, which many think that is for whatever the new WWF gimmick is. Yeah, he said he tried to look like Bruce Willis. I, I can see that. Yeah, I, he... Yeah, he said he was trying to model himself after, I think, was it Bruce Willis in The Jackal? Was that it? I don't think I've ever seen that movie. Or maybe it was Die Hard. Uh, Definitely yeah, wasn't Die it, Hard. Well, not yeah, the worst. Right. Well, uh, for anybody who hasn't seen The Jackal, he's a, he's a, Wait, uh, hit, that he's a hitman. Does, does that have Richard Gere in it? Yes. Okay, I have seen that. Really yeah, good. Uh, yeah, I, I always liked it. I, I think it got crapped on, but I, I don't know. I liked it. Uh, Bruce Willis did a really good job playing a uh, playing a hitman and, you know, master disguise and all that stuff. But pretty cool. Either way, 
Uh, WCW is strongly pursuing Conan, and Uncle Dave says the real reason is because where Conan goes, the rest of AAA stars usually follow, and this is WCW's attempt to try and steal all the AAA stars away from WCW, or excuse me, from ECW. Uh, I guess he's plausible on that because it happens, so he's not wrong. Yeah, I mean, the ones they get, I I don't know, like, what, what ones were there that I well, think, I, I I, from what I heard, I think Rey Mysterio was the biggest part of the package. Yeah, Rey Mysterio, Juventude, Juventude. I think. Yeah, and then... Lycosis, uh, Laparca. Lycosis, yeah. Laparca, I don't know if he was yeah. in ECW ever or was thinking about it, but I don't know. I've heard the other him in an definitely. interview say that losing Rey, like Rey Mysterio was the biggest piece. Like, I've heard him say that. I believe that's, it. That's, that doesn't necessarily mean it's true, but... Looking at him now, he's probably the greatest luchador in history, so it probably is true. Yeah, I believe it. And, I mean, he was always hot, highly sought after even back then. And, uh, I mean, until just very recently, until his, I think until his, he uh, came back to WWE this last time, Conan was like, uh, almost like his manager. Like He would do a lot of negotiating for Ray. So, they were always, always bros. Well, still to this day, yeah. Well, yeah. There's talks of giving Bruce Pritchard a big, renewed push as brother love, and they plan to introduce Ooh. a hot, uh, and they plan to introduce a hot girl as sister love. <laughs> the reason I'm bringing Ooh. this up is because who it involves. Vince McMahon reportedly described sister love as someone who's posed for penthouse, which leads people to believe that they may be bringing in Beulah from ECW. This never happened, of course. Okay, my first thought when you said that before the penthouse thing was Sunny. <laughs> yeah, I, I think they didn't want to reinvent somebody that the WWF fans already knew, which I get that. But if they were going to bring in somebody and actually do this gimmick, it would have, like, they had to make them look like Tammy Faye Baker. They would have had to. Yeah, right. right? Yeah. Like, I didn't even think about them, that, but yes. <laughs> give them the big Mimi uh, eyeshadow and everything. Mimi from Drew Carey, by the way, if nobody knows who I'm talking about. Uh we're highly 90s like centric on the show people so keep up <laughs> also real quick that brother love show would come back because i believe that's where steve austin debuts oh yeah uh, right and he, so, and he does almost like a televangelist preacher kind of speech somewhat yeah and he's also like, he is brother love and uh as the announcer on boy meets world jake roberts wrestles vader so he right. is there I don't know about the renewed push. Also, a renewed push means he had a big push to begin with. No, he didn't. He just had a show. But yeah, well, he was a part was, of like really big segments. No, so totally he was. But I'm just saying, when I hear push, I think like yeah. a huge thing in wrestling, not like a show. But I, I guess well, it can work either way. I won't. It's perfect on that, that, one. that was on. Uh, it's perfect that that was on the the Brother Love show because, like I said, he did almost like a televangelist kind of thing when he was talking, like the whole reach out and put your hand on your television screen and feel my energy kind of thing, you know? Yeah. Right. Like that. Uh, uh, Jim Ross actually did that one. That uh, what show is it? Oh, uh, Armageddon 2000 that we just reviewed, where uh, when Vince was talking about uh, stand up and whatever, and uh, <laughs> and you people at home listening, and Jim Ross was like. Reach out and touch your television screen. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was kind of funny. Uh, An interesting Dustin note. Rose did that too, right? Yeah, one of his famous promos. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, he I'm sure he modeled a lot of his stuff. Again. I mean, those Southern Baptist preacher, like televangelists, were very uh, uh, charismatic. So I'll say that. You can think whatever you want about them, but they were charismatic. And loud, uh, man. Loud! You don't say. Sorry. <laughs> And they and they towed themselves off a lot. Uh, well, they had to make sure God can hear him. He's way up there, so they got to yell. <laughs> Good be Lord. fair. I'm that's, just saying. That's hilarious. <laughs> An interesting note from the latest in your house pay per view in Hershey, Pennsylvania, is that the WWF decided not to confiscate signs this time, and the ECW fans in the crowd basically stole the show with interesting signs that were on camera throughout the pay per view, many of which were ECW related. Well, it's not hard to steal that show. It's called Petty Theft. <laughs> As we talked about earlier, I think it's in your house. Five season things I want to say. Yeah. Is. yeah. Uh, so Conan will be starting with WCW at the beginning of 1996, but will continue to help ECW book AAA wrestlers. 
Yep, he pops up. He's kind of his own thing for a little while, and then he's Dungeon of Doom, Vato. He comes in first, by the way, in like a weird singlet, wearing a mask. Yeah. Then he becomes like the stereotypical cholo. I could say that. My dad was Mexican. Uh, and then, <laughs> then he joins the Dungeon of Doom, and then he really hits the stride with the NWO, in my sense. opinion. Yeah, right. Oh, well, yeah, of course. But the NWO, I think, is the Conan that I remember. The Wolfpack yeah. Conan is like, that's my Conan. That's like one I love the most. Uh, I do want those. I think they're called Legends of Lucha Libre or whatever figures. That old school one of Conan in that outfit. You're yeah. Describing. I, I've I want been kicking that. the tires on that, actually. That one, I want Hoovy. Uh, they got Hoovy in his outfit like when he was uh, when he was young and he was still trying to look like his father. Yeah. And they're, uh, one, they're, yeah. I have a couple Kelsey, other ones. I'm kicking the tires on that tie of Valkyrie, too, so. Yeah. Stay tuned. And then there's, um, the, I think, is that the line where they have the Lucha Bros? Yes. Those Some guys, said, they're brilliant. They have their own likeness, uh, what do you call, or their everything trademark, so they can be on multiple different lines. You have to respect yeah. those four. They are brilliant. <laughs> Damn right, man. Well, Pentagon doesn't... <laughs> Pentagon, uh, I think, it's penthouse, but, but yeah. Good lord. I think Penta finally trademarked uh Penta Zero uh Penta L Zero M. Miedo. Yeah. Uh I think he God, finally White trademarked Boy, that geez. because he he had he was just Pentagon Jr. and then he was Pentagon Dark. All those got trademarked. And then he was, I think, uh I can't remember what the hell came after that. Maybe just Pentagon or whatever. So basically, every every name he's ever used has been trademarked by various companies. So now he's just Penta L Zero M. So there you go. Uh, last couple of stories to wrap up this podcast. Steve Austin did a great promo on the December nineteenth ECW show, running himself down and saying that he showed up to ECW out of shape and with no rehabbing his arm or without rehabbing his arm. And that's why he lost his match for the ECW title and said that he's disgusted with how his career is going. Yeah, well, it's, it, it, this is uh, like uh, when Vader did his, I'm just a fat piece of shit. <laughs> <Except, laughs> but uh, one of the interviews I remember with him, though, he did kind of like, hey, Whipwreck, you did beat me. And yeah, even though I was halfway hurt or something like that, you still beat one of the best in the planet. So he did right. kind of like protect himself a little bit, so... You know. And then he went to WWF and uh, had one of the greatest careers of all time. <sighs> Maybe the greatest but, feud in the history of pro wrestling, too. So, Yep. Final story of the podcast here. To wrap up the year 1995, Paul Heyman is trying to get celebrities to attend the upcoming ECW Christmas Week show. The event is expected to draw the largest crowd in ECW history. Uh, I did not confirm about whether or not that happened, but there you go. Either way. Well, poor that, stars are celebrities, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Either way, that wraps it up for y'all. Uh, you know, as you could tell, we, uh, you know, we talked about it at the beginning there. Uh, we cut this into two because there was a lot to get through here. I didn't expect us to take this long, but hey, I didn't figure you guys wanted to sit down for like a three to four hour podcast. So might as well split it up here. Uh, but we're going to take our final break of the show. When we come back, we're going to tell you what's coming up in the future weeks of the podcast. And it's going to be better than the news. <laughs> yeah, uh, we'll tell you what's coming up in January right after this. Follow the main event marks at facebook.com forward slash main event marks pod on Twitter at main event underscore marks and on Instagram both at main event underscore marks and at main event collector. Hello, everyone. My name is Ryan McCarthy, and I'm the host of the No Credentials Required podcast. Start your work week with the Monday Drop-In, where I talk about the sports beat in the Capital District, also known as the Mighty 518, as well as Metro New York sports from an upstate point of view. I also give a life lesson from a weekly sports story, so you might learn something from that. I also have a midweek podcast where I interview different sports personalities and talk about a wide array of topics. Take a listen and subscribe on your preferred podcast app, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Spreaker, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, and iHeartRadio. Also, check out our social media channels on Twitter and Instagram, BellyUpNCR, and Facebook.com forward slash BellyUpSportsNCR. We're a part of the Belly Up Sports Podcast Network in association with Godzilla Media. No credentials required, where you don't need a press pass to talk sports. Hey! 
Hey gang, it's Commissioner Cooper of TSS Fantasy. We are the fantasy show of the people. Expert fantasy advice, free contests, leading expert medical and legal analysis, and most importantly, you. Interact with us on all social media platforms or check us out at tssfantasy.com. You can hear us on Spotify, Apple and Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, and many more. Check out the fun today and be a part of the most interactive fantasy show around. TSS Fantasy, the fantasy show of the people. The main event marks are available wherever you get podcasts and on YouTube. Find all of our links on our link tree at linktr.ee forward slash main event marks. And we're back. We're back. Thank you for uh, rejoining us for part two here. That means the year is over. And uh, New oh, Year's thank is God. Back. Let's get this year over with. Oh, yeah. Uh, my year hasn't been too awful, but uh, I, I I don't think mine has either. I'm just I think we talked about this when people say that just stupid. <laughs> yeah, it definitely is. I don't get that one. Uh-huh. Uh, but anyway, uh, coming up in January, we're doing something we've never done before, and we're bringing you some new Japan. We're bringing you two of the biggest show. Well, uh, two shows from their biggest show of the year. Uh, first, on January 4th. New Japan Pro Wrestling, Russell Kingdom 8. It's from the year 2014. The main event for the IWGP Intercontinental Championship, actually, is Hiroshi Tanahashi versus the champion Shinsuke Nakamura. Hey, I'll be happy to watch that one, then. Yeah, that one's great. Uh, Tanahashi, obviously the ace of Japan, so that'll be awesome. Uh, Shinsuke, freaking fantastic. The junior heavyweight title is also going to be in Noah, which is weird. (laughs) Right. Uh, The junior heavyweight title is actually being defended by Prince Devitt, a.k.a. Finn Balor, against Kota Ibushi and Kazuchika Okada. The Rainmaker is defending the heavyweight title against Tetsuya Naito. So this, especially the top of the card, looks effing great. We got the... uh, Killer Elite Squad, Davy Boy Smith Jr. and Lance Archer defending the titles against the Bullet Club or the Good Brothers, whatever you want to call them. Yo, and, yeah. So uh, this is a good card. We've never reviewed one of these before, so uh, should be good. And uh, we'll also be joined at the beginning of the year by Kyle or, uh, from uh, the Apron Bump podcast yet again. He wanted one of to get the 46 in Kyles we know, I believe. Yeah, right. But he's going to join us yet again to uh, run down all the goodness that is Russell Kingdom 8. Uh, but we're also bringing you some Royal Rumbles because, of course, it's January. So we're bringing you possibly the greatest Royal Rumble in history, uh, at least in the top two for most people. It's Royal Rumble 1992. It's one of the only times the world title was on the line in the Royal Rumble match. Well, it's been on the line twice, right? Yes. I forget the other year, though. It was when Roman defended it. Triple H won it. 16. 16. 16. Okay. Uh, Yeah, but this was, you know, with a tear in my eye, this was one of the greatest Royal Rumbles ever, man. I I loved it. All-star lineup. Just look at the people who were in that match. It was great. But I think that does it, man. Uh, I think this moment you covered it all. (laughs) Right. Well, thank you for joining me today, Greg. It was an experience. Yeah, and we will see you in 2023 with Wrestle Kingdom 8. Ho, 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 ho. Merry Christmas.